Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. Today, what is cool is the 2018 Rocket and Raygun Awards. Thank you so much for joining us. We have 21 categories to go over for the awards, but we didn't want to just end there. We wanted to do something a little bit different this year. We wanted to reach out to our community of friends and of followers of Electric Playground and ask for their picks for some of these categories as well. So you're going to be hearing from a lot of really cool people, people that you may have seen on other outlets and people that you may have seen in some of our EP live streams as well, some of the community members out there. So the way that this is going to work is we're going to list off our nominees and there's going to be five nominees per each category. Then we're going to hear from the community and then we're coming back to me and we will decide our winner and uh, that's who will receive a Rocket and Ray Gun Award for 2018 and what an incredible year it's been. Let's get started with our very first category which is Best Kids or Family Game. Here are the nominees for the Best Kids Game. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, developed by Game Freak, published by Nintendo. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, developed by Bandai Namco and Sora, published by Nintendo. Lego The Incredibles, developed by TT Fusion, published by Warner Brothers. Astrobot Rescue Mission, developed by Japan Studio, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Starlink Battle for Atlas, developed by Ubisoft Toronto, published by Ubisoft. All right, those are EPN's nominees, but are those the games that our friends around the community would choose? Let's find out. For my favorite kids game of the year, you know what? I'll pick Spyro the Reignited Trilogy. I played those games as a kid and I absolutely love them. And there's gonna be nothing that makes me more happy to see a new generation of younger gamers getting exposed to some of the best platformers of all time. Not to mention that they look better and control much better than they ever have. Doesn't matter if you're a kid or a kid at heart, it's a wonderful game for all ages. So I don't mean this in a bad way. Let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee. Me and my wife were both loving the heck out of this game. We played so much of it. It's very simple, it's very easy to pick up and play. If you've never played a Pokemon game before, very easy to get in and learn the world. My best kids game is Super Metroid. Now why is it my best kids game for 2018? My three and a half year old, we started playing Super Metroid together and it's awesome. So I picked Super Metroid because my kid and I are playing it. That being said, she'd probably pick Paw Patrol if she had a choice. That's how it works. I'm the dad, what are you gonna do? The one killer kids game in VR this year has to be Astrobot. Not only is it kid friendly, it's family friendly, it's everybody friendly. It's probably one of the best games that came out this year. Vic can vouch for it, I'll vouch for it. That's my vote for best kids game. My pick for best kids game uh, of 2018 goes to LEGO DC Super Villains. Just like all of the other LEGO games, it's great to play with someone younger or older. The drop in drop out co-op is awesome and uh, it's really easy to help or encourage young gamers to play along with their parents. Is there anything more kid friendly than Super Smash Bros? Just came out! Get your Smash Bros on! I can't wait to go play more. I tried to download it on hotel Wi-Fi. It's not happening. It is not happening at all. Another 78 hours and it'll be done downloading. All right, thanks for all of your incredible feedback, everybody. The winner this year of our 2018 Rocket and Reagan Award for Best Kids or Family Game is Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. It is an incredible game filled with surprise and delight. And I saw it firsthand. All of the other games are terrific. You know, being able to build your own crafts and spaceships in uh, Starlink, super fun. The Lego The Incredibles game is loaded with all kinds of great inside uh, jokes and moments from the Pixar world. The Pokemon Let's Go game are terrific on the Nintendo Switch and I uh, got to see my daughter try to traverse the world in Astrobot and play a VR experience for the first time and that was amazing but I saw the joy in her face and she literally grabbed the controller out of my hand for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate because of all of those backgrounds and all of those characters it's an incredible game and you can play it with your whole family and you're gonna have a blast it's gonna get competitive but you're gonna love Super Smash Brothers Ultimate so congratulations you are our winner for the Rocket and Raygun Award for Best Kids or Family Game this year. We're going to get moving on to our next category now. This is the Best Remastered Game for 2018, and our nominees are Shadow of the Colossus, developed by Sony and Bluepoint Games, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Spyro the Reignited Trilogy, developed by Insomniac, Toys for Bob, and Sanzaru Games, published by Activision. 
Bayonetta 1 and 2, developed by Platinum Games, published by Nintendo. Diablo 3 Eternal Collection, developed by Blizzard Entertainment and Iron Galaxy, published by Blizzard Entertainment. Burnout Paradise Remastered, developed by Criterion Games, published by Electronic Arts. Some excellent revisits there, some terrific choices for our nominees, but I want to hear from the community and see if they've got some alternative suggestions for us. Let's take a look. Back in the old days, video games used to look like this, but now they look like this. Wow, remasters are incredible, aren't they, Shane? And 2018 has been one of the best years for remasters in video games. Yes, but only one could be the best remaster of 2018. What's that? Shadow of the Colossus. It's a great remake of the original game that came out on the PS2. We did have a remaster on the PS3 as well, but what the 2018 game did was surpassed everything from those other games. Yeah, it basically took the original game and yep. made it play even better than the original with tons of updated graphics yep. and so much other stuff. That's right. C controls have been updated. You got your HDR support and you can even change the frame rate settings on the game itself so that you can play super duper smoothly or you can go for like the most beautiful look of the game with 30 frames per second. It really is worth it. And honestly, we think it, even though it was a bit of an early entry into yep. 2018, it still is the best remaster of this generation. It's a masterpiece. Shadow of the Colossus. Now, the original game came out on PS2, then there was a PS3 remake, which I did not like. The controls were really bad in that game, but this game got it really right. The graphics, I mean, they've updated them, the textures. It was so nice to revisit this world. Shadow of the Classes is just such a good game by itself. It's a remastered edition. It's like, well, all right, let's make an awesome game awesomer. You win. The best remaster of 2018, I would say that goes to Halo Master Chief Collection, as in they finally patched this game to work out all of the bugs, to work online, and to look incredible on an Xbox One X. If you haven't, get four controllers, plug it into a 4K TV, and get into split-screen combat. You can have 1080p windows for each of the four players, thanks to the 4K power of Xbox One X. There's nothing like it. it the young man in me who did a lot of Halo split-screen stuff on tiny squish TVs with friends wishes that this had been around back then. So my pick for best remaster of 2018 is going to be the Crash Insane Trilogy. It's just as much fun to play now as it was back then, and it's actually really great to be able to play it on any platform rather than just being locked to the PlayStation. My vote goes to Shadow of the Colossus. Outstanding game on its own. The remaster is amazingly done by Bluepoint Games and it's visually it's stunning. The audio is fantastic. And like I said, the game itself is a work of art. It's Spyro the Reignited Trilogy for me. Now, when I took a look at this game originally, I wasn't sure if they were remaking it similar to what they did with Crash where they used kind of the old wireframes, the old game engine itself. No, this was them actually taking Spyro and completely redoing it in Unreal Engine 4. And it really looks awesome. Not only that, but they pretty much captured all the same charm from the old Spyro game, not only throwing three different Spyro games in there, but really making them look awesome, each one in their own way. I want to pick Spyro, I really do, but it has to be Shadow of the Colossus as the best remaster. Blue Point Studios are the maestros when it comes to remastering games, from Metal Gear Solid to God of War and even Shadow of the Colossus back in 2010. They didn't just port the game again on the PS4, they created it from the ground up. It looks better, it controls better, it's just a breathtaking experience. And if you have yet to play it, do yourself a favor, play one of the best games of all time, which also happens to be the best remaster of 2018. Great to hear from everybody there, but it's pretty hard to argue with the fact that Shadow of the Colossus on the PlayStation 4 was a masterful reimagining of a masterpiece. Beautiful controls, beautiful art. It is absolutely exceptional, and congratulations to Fumita Ueda and the original team and everybody involved in bringing this unbelievably immersive experience again in 2018. It's our Rocket and Raygun Award winner for Best Remastered Game of the Year. Right now, we're moving on to Best Strategy Game of 2018. Here are the nominees. Into the Breach, developed and published by Subset Games. Valkyria Chronicles 4, developed by Sega and Media Vision, published by Sega. Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden, developed by The Bearded Ladies, published by Funcom. Jurassic World Evolution, developed and published by Frontier Developments. Pocket City, developed and published by Code Brew Games. 
All right, those are our nominees, but this is an incredibly difficult category. All five of those games are terrific. I want to hear, though, from our community. Let's hear from our community. My strategy game of the year has to be a game called Transpose. Um, it's a weird game mixing time and gravity where you play with clones of yourself. So on the first run through, you go over to the edge of a platform, grab a block and throw it up to a higher platform, respawn at that higher platform, time resets, you now respawn at that higher platform, walk over there, look down, see you walk towards the edge of that platform and throw that block up and now you catch it. You're playing with yourself, as the game goes you get more complex uh, story, tons of clones, uh, platforming action, it's crazy, it's a mind bender and it's awesome. Okay, we only had one video submitted. That's uh, usually the way it goes with strategy games. Not everybody has time to play all of these things. Thank you very much, VR Grid, for that. I also heard from uh, Graham Coombe, who's got a very big suggestion for this one as well. He says, uh, Warhammer 40K Mechanicus. He says, it's a tactical top-down view strategy game set in the far-flung, gritty future of the 41st millennium. The strategy is complex while also streamlined. The game looks, sounds, and feels great. The story is interesting and gritty and the unique characters truly set it apart. It's a 10 out of 10 on the Graham scale, and Graham sent us a bunch of uh, notes and comments on different types of games. That's the one that he was most excited about, though. Uh, so thank you very much for that, Graham. Uh, there were great choices in strategy this year. I think it was phenomenal that Sega brought back Valkyria Chronicles. That was a super fun game with lots of great strategy, but lots of cool action, beautiful story, and of course, incredible visuals. Beautiful game. Pocket City surprised the heck out of me. It's developed by a one-person team in Toronto called Code Brew, and it's basically playing a slimmed down but still incredibly deep game of Sim City on your phone, and the tactility of choosing all of the regions and zones and all that stuff on your phone. It's just so fun. Pocket City is a must-buy if you've got a, a phone that will run it. I was really impressed with Jurassic World Evolution. I thought that that was a super fun game to have uh, dinos chase around little scientists and chomp on them. I thought there was some really great art in that and uh, some good smiles and some complexity in the game design as well. Same goes for Mutant Year Zero, which kind of combines some of the uh, gameplay lessons of Valkyria Chronicles with the, um, the you know, the action-oriented stuff of moving your characters around, and then the turn-based, you know, complexity of playing something like XCOM fused together with uh, some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sort of comic booky and uh, character design. Very cool game, but the game that we're giving the Rocket and Raygun Award to for best strategy title of 2018 is Into the Breach. This is developed by Subset, who also brought us the FTL game, which is also incredible. It's another turn-based, grid-based experience where casualties like buildings being demolished and stuff come into play. It's very minimalist, it's very simplistic, but it's really hard to put down, and it's uh, an amazing fit on the Nintendo Switch because you'll be playing that for hours and hours and getting your butt handed to you, but still, an incredible game. So congratulations to Subset, fantastic title with Into the Breach. You are our strategy game of 2018. Now we're moving on, and our next award is for Best Sports Game of 2018. Here are our Rocket and Raygun Award nominees. NBA 2K19, developed by Visual Concepts, published by 2K Sports. NHL 19, developed by EA Canada, published by Electronic Arts. FIFA 19, developed by EA Canada, published by Electronic Arts. Mario Tennis Aces, developed by Camelot Software, published by Nintendo. MLB The Show 18, developed by Sony San Diego, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Now those are our picks for the Rocket and Reagan Award for Best Sports Title. Let's hear from the community and see what some of their choices are. Best sports game, ooh, again, I played a lot of Madden this year, but I gotta give it to my boys, WWE, WWE 2K19, come on. Got AJ Styles in there, got Daniel Bryan's career mode, WWE. Always. My pick for best sports game of the year is going to be Mario Tennis Aces. This is going to be a little left field here, but uh, Servios, they released a game called Sprint Vector. It's basically a racing game where you have to actually pump your arms to run. And the faster you pump, the faster you run. Making for one of the most exhausting experiences I've ever played, but some of the most fun. It's crazy, it's physical, and that's my best sports game. 
All right, great choices, great picks. Paul Adamson, one of our EPN members, sent us a note. He says he chose NBA 2K19. I've always been partial to NBA 2K19. You guys know how much I love that franchise. 2K never drops the ball, no pun intended, with NBA. Very, very cool game. But I also am a huge fan of the passion and just the drive to build something very special with the MLB franchise that Sony San Diego always has. And I think the same thing can be said for the NHL team at EA Canada. They always deliver deliver something really fun and really accessible. Maybe a little bit clunky with all of the menus that you have to navigate, but really, really enjoyable game in NHL 19. And meanwhile, the FIFA game, which makes all the money, it's one of the biggest titles on earth. EA Canada does an amazing job of not resting on their laurels. They always add new features and new value to the equation. And I think if you chose any of those more simulation-based sports titles, you've picked a winner. They're loaded with value, loaded with replayability, all kinds of online functionality, excellent games. But I think I'm going to be choosing something that's not getting that yearly update, something that's a little bit more special from Nintendo. We haven't seen a tennis game, a Mario tennis game from Camelot in a while. That's why I'm giving it to Mario Tennis Aces, which gave us all kinds of great single-player content. Nintendo's done a good job at supporting it after launch with new characters that you can download. It's incredibly intense competition when you're playing against other people. Mario Tennis Aces is wonderful. It's a great pickup for the Switch, and it's our 2018 sports game of the year. Our next award is going to the best fighting game of 2018. Here are our nominees. Dragon Ball Fighters, developed by Arc System Works and published by Bandai Namco. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, developed by Bandai Namco and Sora, published by Nintendo. Soul Calibur VI, developed and published by Bandai Namco. Street Fighter V Arcade, developed and published by Capcom. Blade Strangers, developed by Studio Sai Zenzen, published by Nicholas. All right, now let's hear from some of the members in our community to hear what they think is the best fighting game of 2018. I mean, when it comes to fighting games in 2018, we don't think it gets better than Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Everyone is there, and it's just inapproachable. I know there's a million different fighting games that how we have better mechanics, this, that, and the other. They go to Evo and they're amazing. But for a bunch of clowns like Kind of Funny, we love gathering on the TV and fighting in Smash. Woo! Thank you, Kevin. Mm. What's that? Best Fighter of 2018. Well, there's only one game that we would pick. That's Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch. This basically takes every single Super Smash Bros. game that Nintendo has ever made and takes it all and puts it into one awesome package. That's right, they're all here. All the characters from Smash of the past, and then you got great single player stuff like the World of Light, endless customization. And honestly, it's just really fun to play. Actually, a lot of good fighting games this year, but I'm gonna go Dragon Ball Fighter Z. First saw that game, it blew me away. I played it, still blew me away. I like all the customization you can get in there and do. And Roman Rush, not just a fighting game, but there's so much more layers on top of it. So Dragon Ball Fighter Z, best fighting game. So my pick for best fighter of 2018 is Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Favorite Smash Brothers game. It reminds me a lot of Melee, like the single player, the multiplayer is great. And playing with people online is actually uh, relatively simple to do, considering it's a Nintendo game. It has to go to Serbios' Creed Rise to Glory, which is of course a tie-in to the Creed movie franchise. It's a great mix of boxing simulation and arcade action. It had multiplayer though, which made it so much more fun to just go in there and bash your friends' faces in. It's super fun. It looked great. Played great. I love it. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is to me the best fighting game of 2018. Nintendo has really kick their unique fighting game series up a notch. And I was shocked about not only the additions of the new characters, but also bringing back the characters that were from the past titles. And Vic, I sure had lots of fun playing that online with you. Has to be Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and it isn't because of the amount of levels or the music that's involved in this game, or even the extras. It really comes down to the characters and the huge roster that is in this game. The amount of fun I have trying to figure out which one am I going to personally relate to, which one does the best damage, which one is the best to use, that's the adventure for me. It has to be Smash Brothers. And I'm not even saying it because of it having the most characters or the most stages, but I think that what makes Smash Brothers so great is that regardless of your skill level, whether you play in a tournament or whether you just picked up the franchise for the first time, it's really easy to get into and it's so fun to master. 
All right, thanks everybody for your great picks right there. Now let's look at these nominees here for a second. Dragon Ball Fighters is an incredible technical marvel with beautiful animation, tons of fun for fans and even non-fans alike. It's just a great fighting experience. Soul Calibur 6 is also a beautiful game with fluid animation, lots of fighters that we know and love, plus the idea that you can customize and create your own character. Street Fighter V Arcade Edition is kind of the perfect additional content added to the Street Fighter V title that was a little disappointing Pointing and underwhelming at launch. And Blade Strangers is actually great fan service, especially if you're fans of indie games like Shovel Knight or The Binding of Isaac or Cave Story. But I think it's pretty hard, as many of our uh, fans and people in the uh, EP community have decided as well, to refute Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which is one of the most extraordinary fighting games ever published. It's just loaded to the brim with all kinds of incredible characters and backgrounds and moments from Nintendo's history, and it's a solid fighting experience as well. There's lots of technical, uh, you know, know-how to excel at the game. You benefit from going into training mode, you benefit from playing with people that are better than you, and you can learn from. There is lots and lots of ways into this game, and it never stops surprising you. Unbelievable accomplishment. That's why Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the best fighting game of 2018 and our Rocket and Raygun Award winner. We are going to move on to our next category in the 2018 Rocket and Raygun Awards, which is Best Indie Game. Here are our nominees. Moonlighter, developed by Digital Sun, published by 11-Bit Studios. Celeste, developed and published by Map Makes Games. Owlboy, developed and published by D-Pad Studio. Hollow Knight, developed and published by Team Cherry. Dead Cells, developed and published by Motion Twin. All right, some incredible games there, but I wanted to hear from friends and from people in the EPN community about their picks for best indie game. Let's take a look. Hmm, if I had to choose a game that was independently made by Motion Twin, would it be Dead Cells? Yes, it would be. Motion Twin crushed it. Hands down, Dead Cells. Dead Cells, I love this game. It's uh, artwork is fantastic. It's gameplay is great. You keep going, you keep discovering new things, new weapons. It's an excellent game. Best indie game, giving that one to Minute, that is a really cool game. It plays off of the Legend of Zelda formula, the top-down kind of slasher, but gives it a really cool twist, that one minute time limit per life, and it's just cool, man. I love that game. My pick for best indie game of the year is Celeste. Got to be Celeste. To me, it's the best 2D side-scroller platformer from an indie developer since Super Meat Boy. It punishes you so much if you do the wrong move, but it's very easy to just pick yourself back up and just try again over and over. And even the story, which is not usually something I put a lot of attention into, actually moved me in some areas, and it went to a bunch of dark places I wasn't expecting, but at the end it was really heartfelt. And I really appreciate the experience of it. It plays well, it's incredibly thoughtful, and I highly recommend it. if you haven't checked it, please try out Celeste. VR is so full of indies that it's really hard to narrow this one down, but I gotta give the edge to Beat Saber. It was a four-person dev team who made probably the most addicting rhythm game I've ever played. It's got some sick, catchy tunes. Anyone can play it. It's a blast. It's just great. My pick for the very best indie game of 2018 has got to be Celeste because it feels like a great transformation of the genre. So many games that try and be indie now all have that really retro aesthetic but they don't really know what to do with it. Whereas Celeste is so good because it's kind of just an explanation of the fact that no matter how things look or how things play, it's about what you can overcome. As long as stuff is fun and tells you a good little tale, it's worth playing. And I gotta give it credit for having such an amazing soundtrack on top of everything else. For me, the best indie game of the year was an incredibly close race, but I'm going to give the nod to Dead Cells, which did an incredibly good job setting up a challenging series of levels, but allowing me to feel very accomplished and rewarded for beating those levels. And I did have that little bit of sense of progression from failure to failure to failure. Dead Cells by far is my favorite indie game of 2018. From the Metroidvania aspects of the game to collecting new weapons and figuring out which one should I use as I go into this part of the level. You go in, you figure out the patterns of the enemies, you figure out which weapon does the most damage or which weapon doesn't do the right damage on an enemy, and you die. But essentially you go back and learn your lesson. That right there is the perfect marriage of just addictive gameplay and rewarding aspects that you just don't get in other indie games. You feel 
very fulfilled once you figure out the pattern of getting through a level. Best indie game was probably the hardest choice I had to make, but let me tell you about a little game called The Messenger. It is my indie game of the year, and it was actually the studio's first game that they've ever made. It's their debut game. It's a very, very interesting platforming game where you actually shift between time periods from past and present that switch between 8-bit and 16-bit. Couple that with some really cool ideas where you can actually jump multiple times after hitting different items or enemies, unlockable paths, tons of items. This is an outstanding platforming game and it's my indie game of the year. I mean, the best independent game this year, we think, was Celeste. What a game, right? You, you take this platformer, you take this action it's the you screw it up and you get right back in and you go and you go and you go and the checkpoints being like you're in larger levels but the mini checkpoints right of i just have to get to that side of the screen i just have to do it you toss in b-sides you toss in all the berries you toss in an amazing story right i don't think any of us saw that coming in celeste something that would reach out and touch us the way it did but it did celeste is an overall package and that's why we love it Terrific commentary, everybody. Thank you so much for that. Now, let's take a look at EPN's nominees here, okay? Moonlighter really stole my heart because it's a great fusion of Zelda-style hack-and-slash action-adventuring with this really charming merchant component in there where you open up your own store. So clever and so absorbing and so addictive. Owl Boy is another fantastic Metroidvania out there, but it really kind of mixed up the game design by allowing you to fly around in your owl suit and jointly work with other NPCs to kind of become more powerful as you explored the environment and defeated the evil that's in the game. Also, gorgeous music and great visuals in that title. Hollow Knight is an incredibly mysterious and evocative, very challenging experience that kind of blends a little Metroidvania, you know, adventuring and hack and slash type gameplay with a Dark Souls kind of challenge. Incredibly intelligently made, cool characters, unforgettable design, and a wonderful, wonderful title. Dead Cells is loaded with lots and lots of challenge and also a terrific loot system in there that gives you incredible weapons and incredible powers and abilities. But our winner is Celeste. Perfect precision in terms of jumps and navigation, almost Super Meat Boy-esque, but there's also this underlying story that's filled with intrigue and mystery and lots of surprise and lots of heart. It's a beautiful game and everybody at Matt Makes Game should be incredibly proud of this. This was an incredibly difficult category to pick a winner from because all of these games are extraordinary and you owe it to yourself to go out and check them all out. But if we have to pick a winner, it is going to be Celeste. Congratulations, you are a Rocket and Ray Gun Award winner for Indie Game of the Year. We are going to jump into our next category, and the way that this works is EPN will deliver our nominees. Then we're going to hear from uh, the EPN community, our friends and fans of the show, and they're going to give us some of their ideas and picks. And then we're going to come back to me, and I'm going to pick the winner of our category. Our category is Best VR Game of 2018. Moss, developed and published by Polyarch. Astrobot Rescue Mission, developed by Japan Studio and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Beat Saver, developed and published by Beat Games. Firewall Zero Hour, developed by First Contact Entertainment and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Wipeout Omega Collection, VR Mode, developed by XDev, Clever Beans, and EPOS Game Studios and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Tremendous nominees in our best VR category. This was a terrific year to have a VR headset, especially a PlayStation VR headset, as uh, the list of nominees kind of, uh, you know, tells us right there. I want to hear from the community, though. What are some of their picks for best VR game of 2018? My pick for best VR game of the year has nothing to do with the Virtual Boy. It has everything to do with Tetris. Tetris Effect. Tetris Effect because Tetris and VR were made to be put together. I love Tetris a lot and being fully immersed in a musical world that's just beautiful and has my favorite time waster ever and being immersed in that world is just something I cannot love more. Didn't play any VR. 
My pick for the best virtual reality game of the year is Beat Saber. I would say the VR promise is much easier to sell with games as simple and brilliantly executed as this. I recently went to Tokyo for a vacation and went to all of its arcades to check out so many crazy Bimani games. They don't let up over in Japan with ideas that use hands and bodies and all kinds of stuff, but I would still argue that Beat Saber's premise of DDR for your hands in your home is cooler than anything in the land where DDR was born. That's about as high of praise as I can offer. Astrobot, I have to mention really quickly, as a very, very close second place. Astrobot has to win Best VR Game of the Year. Not only that I love platformers, and as a game, it's incredibly well designed even without the VR features, those add another aspect that makes the game even more charming. I was a skeptic before VR, but once I tried this game, the smile could just not be wiped off my face. Getting VR for Christmas, though, this might be the year. Next year, I'm gonna have a vote. I'm gonna have a vote. Santa's coming through. This year was a banner year. Moss, Firewall, Tetris Effect, so many amazing VR games. But for us, the best VR game period for the year was Beat Saber. You look like an idiot playing it, but you feel like a badass, right? When you're in there, when you're slash, I do it every morning now as a way to wake up and get a little bit of exercise before I eat a million chicken wings. The soundtrack, the, the it, Beat Saber is incredible. If you have the means, buy this game. So my best VR game of the year, PS4 game and game of the year, has to go to the Persistence. It's a uh, stealth action roguelike. Every time you die, you have to respawn, you can upgrade your body, you find new weapons. Uh, you have to get through five levels of a ship that's floating near a black hole and save it. It gets crazy, the enemies get nuts. Um, the stronger you get, the more of a badass you feel, but it still makes you cower and you feel weak and it's great and awesome and fun and I can't get enough of it. Babe, I'm getting VR for Christmas, right? For Christmas! All right, great input from everyone there. Thank you so much for sending us your videos. We, let's take a look at these nominees here for a second. We've got Moss from Polyarch, which was so charming and so lovable. I fell in love with that little mouse. Very, very cool game. Beautiful artwork and a lush environment to explore. Really a tremendous title. Beat Saber is a ton of fun as well. You're going to get a workout and you're going to listen to some fantastic music. I really enjoy playing Firewall Zero Hour, which has a terrible name. I always forget that name, but it's one of those fun games where you can pick up the PlayStation gun peripheral, the VR gun peripheral, and it just, you feel like a badass in the game. Incredibly well designed and totally suitable for the VR experience. Wipeout Omega Collection, the VR mode was a free update to anybody that owned that game, and I think this is one of those games where you go, is this going to work? It's probably going to make you barf because, it's the, you know, the Wipeout games move so fast. But I'll tell you what, it really does work because of the refinements in the title, but also the customization with how you can place yourself within the cockpit of the Wipeout craft. An exceptional game. You owe it to yourself to check it out. I know you're going to be super impressed. That leaves Astrobot Rescue Mission, which is our winner. This was an extraordinary title. It was just an exceptional platformer with lots of great puzzles. You're trying to save all your little robots robot buddies. It actually puts you into the experience though. You actually play as a character in there and you've got to interact with objects using your head, which is attached obviously to the PlayStation VR headset. Gorgeous graphics, lots of charm, great music, simply one of the best games of the year and clearly the best VR game experience that I played and that we played here at EPN in 2018. Great stuff, Sony. Man, have we got a huge category for you right now. This was an incredible year for the PlayStation 4. Let's take a look at some of the nominees for the Rocket and Raygun Award for Best PlayStation 4 Game of the Year. Marvel's Spider-Man, developed by Insomniac Games and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. God of War, developed by Sony Santa Monica, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Dragon Quest XI, The Elusive Age, developed and published by Square Enix. Red Dead Redemption 2, developed by Rockstar North and Rockstar San Diego, published by Rockstar Games. And Monster Hunter World, developed and published by Capcom. Now clearly we chose games that played exceptionally well on the PlayStation 4. We didn't limit this to just exclusives for the platform, but these were terrific games for the PlayStation 4. Now before we get into who has won in this category, and man, this was a tough call, let's hear from the community. These are some of our friends and some of our fans. My choice for best PS4 game of the year is Spider-Man PS4. I love this game. It had me hooked from the get-go, and that hasn't happened to me in quite a while. 
It took me out of a rut of trying to find a game that completely captivated me, and Spider-Man PS4 did just that. Insomniac deserves to win this award for making an action-adventure game that got even inexperienced players to pick up the controller to play. My PlayStation 4 game of the year is Spider-Man. Now, you might think this is a coin flip between God of War and Spider-Man. I don't blame anybody for going either way, but the sheer sensation of web-slinging across virtual Manhattan is the most zen gameplay mechanic I've found in 2018. Whenever I'm in a bad mood, I can turn this game on, whip across Spider-Man's virtual city, and get into a bunch of satisfying missions and combat along the way. I love Spider-Man. The uh, best PS4 game has to go to, let's see, uh, Spider-Man PS4? Yeah, Spider-Man PS4. Why? Because it's called Spider-Man PS4. It's not on any other console. You can only play it on one PS4. The best PS4 game of the year is going to Tetris Effect. I love Tetris a lot. And this is a VR Tetris with beautiful music by the makers of Res. If you don't play this, it's just don't worry about it. You're missing out, but just whatever, man. This game is amazing. Just mwah. I love it. The best PlayStation 4 game is Marvel's Spider-Man. I enjoyed how much action it, there is in it. The story was terrific. The voice acting was superb. The combat was very fluid, and I even enjoyed it how much um, stealth action there was in it. The PS4 had an amazing year, but my favorite game out of all of them has got to be Spider-Man. The great combat, the amazing screening mechanics, the fantastic story and the performances accompanying it, and of course, those brave taking visuals. It's not just the best Spider-Man game ever made, it's just triple A excellence. My pick for the best PlayStation 4 game has got to be God of War, and that's a pretty hard choice because overall in 2018 we had some great stuff like Yakuza and Spider-Man, but just ever so slightly I gotta give it to Kratos himself, simply because I think that the narrative style of this was so freaking sharp. Having it be one long shot where it really feels like you're putting on the axe of Kratos and trying to solve all these different terrible crimes of his past. Literally fighting his inner demons was a strong choice and something that definitely makes it legendary in my opinion. My PlayStation 4 game of the year is going to go to God of War. Something so ridiculous has happened. They've taken a character that has already had his own franchise and it was in the past and they've made him reborn. And do you know how hard that is to do? Especially when he's got built-in mechanics that people expect. And when I played God of War, it was absurd how they somehow nailed down everything but made it new. I think you guys understand how hard it is to please gamers. And this game not only pleased gamers, but has us so excited about the next part of this story. This is an achievement that can't be overlooked. If you're asking me what the best PlayStation 4 game is, the answer for 2018 is simple. God of War. Sony Santa Monica reinvented that franchise, reinvented a character that I personally did not like, hated Kratos, but here I am playing God of War in rapture. Every one of his decisions I'm behind. Atreus, an amazing character. The action's amazing, the gameplay is amazing, the exploration is amazing, the story is incredible. The game is so well written that I would row the boat to whatever the objective was and then sit there to let the NPC finish the dialogue for the story he was telling. Uh, that doesn't happen. And then when I beat it, I immediately came back to get the platinum to go do everything. And it not, uh, there wasn't any point in that journey where I was like, this is wasted. You're wasting my time. You're not respecting my time. God of War from stem to stern is a masterpiece. The best PS4 game in 2018 is gonna be God of War, where they've taken an existing franchise that was suffering from a little bit of serious fatigue, reimagined it, reinvigorated it, transported it into the year 2018 with incredible graphics, a great story, and exceptional gameplay mechanics. They've completely nailed it. The best PS4 game of the year is Spider-Man. Mostly because we all know that Vic is gonna pick Spider-Man. Some incredible commentary there, and I know that everybody agonized over their decisions for this one, but let's take a look at some of these uh, nominees here. Now, obviously, God of War is a massive title. I think it is the intellectual choice. I think it's the one where you go, oh my God, I was not expecting this. I was not expecting these uh, design decisions or these editing decisions in terms of storytelling. It, it isn't overwrought. It's not overloaded with uh, too much exposition or, you know, there, it, it's not a lot of like wasted time in this game. It's a massive, massive experience and you are in 
the moments all the way throughout this gorgeous game. It plays well, uh, the combat is incredible, the storytelling is exceptional, the voice acting and, and uh, the animations, all of it just out of this world. Such an extraordinary accomplishment for Sony. Dragon Quest XI The Elusive Age, another superlative role-playing experience from Square Enix. Beautiful, beautiful role-playing experience. Uh, you could say the same thing about Monster Hunter World, which really kind of puts the emphasis on action and partnering up with your pal and going and hunting down these extraordinary beasts out there. It really sung on the PlayStation 4. You could say the same thing about Red Dead Redemption 2, which is obviously a massive labor of love from a massive army of individuals strewn across the planet to make this game. So many layers, so much detail in this massive open world experience. Really an incredible game. But the game that I think a lot of people agreed on in our community, and I happen to agree on as well as our best PlayStation 4 game of the year, is a game that I couldn't stop playing. It didn't get the 10 out of 10 from me, but it was a game that I could not stop going back to, and that speaks volumes. It's the game I had the most fun with on the PlayStation 4. It's Marvel's Spider-Man. You know, if you look at the stats, it's the game that more people are finishing than any other out there. It's uh, the fastest selling PlayStation exclusive. And I think it's putting so many smiles on faces because it's heartfelt. Not only does it have all the cool moments in there, all of the, the traversal stuff with the web slinging and just running around and, and feeling like Spider-Man, but it's got the emotional beats in there from the fantastic Stan Lee cameo to, you know, all the complexities, these interpersonal relationships that are that exist in Peter Parker's universe. Marvel's Spider-Man is an outstanding accomplishment, and in a very, very tough field, it is our PlayStation 4 Game of the Year and our Rocket and Raygun Award winner. And we are going to be moving on to our next category, which is Best Mobile or Portable Game. And yes, the Switch counts. The Switch is a portable system. Nintendo went all in on creating this hybrid console for us. And so many of the games are fantastic in portable mode. So we took that into consideration with EPN's nominees. Let's take a look at them right now. Celeste for Nintendo Switch, developed and published by Matt Makes Games. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for Nintendo Switch, developed by Nintendo, Bandai Namco, and Sora, published by Nintendo. Fortnite for iOS, Android, and Nintendo Switch, developed and published by Epic Games. Diablo 3 Eternal Collection for Nintendo Switch, developed and published by Blizzard Entertainment. Octopath Traveler for Nintendo Switch, developed by Square Enix and Acquire, published by Nintendo and Square Enix. So lots of great big Nintendo Switch games in there that you can play on the go, which is incredible. I'm going to have my pick for best mobile or portable game very soon. But first, let's hear from the fans and the friends. A lot of really great stuff coming out of the mobile platforms. And even though I'm not a Fortnite guy, I'm really impressed that you can play Fortnite on an iPad, an iPhone, Android phone, whatever. I mean, I didn't want to really include Fortnite in my round for the best games of the year, but the fact that it's so playable, surprisingly playable on portable, I think makes it one of the best portable games of the year. Oh, you went there. You did that thing with best mobile and portable game. Switch games available. Well, then I'm going to have to go with the game I played the most on the Switch this year. Dead Cells, that's right. It's the best game to take with you on the go because you don't need a stupid internet connection to play it. You can have all the hours of fun, all of them on your Switch. Take it with you on the go, Dead Cells. I thought I eulogized the 3DS, but lo and behold, WarioWare Gold just comes out of nowhere and just captivates me completely. I just love the experience so much, it made me laugh the whole way through. Not just with the creative minigames that come back, but also the cutscenes that are just absolutely hysterical. Charles Martinet did a phenomenal job voicing Wario, and that alone is worth the price of admission. I know the 3DS is pretty much making its way out, but please, give WarioWare Gold a shot. For best mobile game of 2018, we say Florence. Florence, wow, what a game, right? The way it told the story to you in 45 minutes, the way it actually made you play it. Like, you, you'd think it would just be an interactive movie, right? A cool animated short. It wasn't. It, it gave you interesting ways to engage with that story. It had an amazing soundtrack. It, you know, made my wife cry while she watched me play it. Like, Florence is incredible, and everybody needs to play that. 
Yes, mobile or portable has become a divisive category because there are lots of different ways that we can get our mobile experiences these days. Florence is incredible, by the way. I have been blown away by that. Greg is right about that game. But let's look at our nominees, okay? Celeste is, as we mentioned in our uh, best indie game category, which it won, is an incredible action-adventure experience. You're leaping off of platforms and solving a mystery pixel perfect precision it's an absolutely outstanding game super smash brothers ultimate which won for a fighting game is a fantastic experience as well it also won for kids game because it's incredibly accessible and it's a, a great portable experience and what's amazing about playing it on this uh, nintendo switch platform is you can take the joy con off put the little screen on the table and then pass a joy con to a pal and you're playing multiplayer ridiculous fighting experiences with every character that you can imagine which i was able to do before a movie with Johnny Millennium last week, which was incredible. Fortnite is, of course, an unstoppable force in the business as well. Epic Games has to be commended with its ability to get this game everywhere and to also get competing hardware manufacturers to play nice together so that people can get into cross-platform play. Really amazing stuff. It's a great game on the Switch. It's also really solid as a phone game. If you're playing it on an Android device or an iOS device, you can still get your core Fortnite experience, which is really incredible. And and finally, Square Enix delivered something incredibly beautiful to the Nintendo platform with Octopath Traveler this year. It's a massive role-playing experience that really pays homage to the 16-bit era. That is going to be my pick for best mobile or portable game. It is one to get lost in. The game looks like a pop-up book, and because you can carry it around with you on your Nintendo Switch and, you know, just prop it up on a table and get lost in that beautiful world that's crafted for us, it feels like you're reading this gorgeous pop-up book. Octopath Traveler was a tremendous gift from Square Enix and from Nintendo, and it's absolutely the best pick for portable or mobile game of 2018. We're moving on to our next category now, which is Best Action Adventure Game or Platformer. Let's take a look at EPN's nominees. Celeste, developed and published by Matt Makes Games. God of War, developed by Sony Santa Monica, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Red Dead Redemption 2, developed by Rockstar North and Rockstar San Diego, published by Rockstar Games. Marvel's Spider-Man, developed by Insomniac Games, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Astrobot Rescue Mission, developed by Japan Studio, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. All right, those are our nominees, and I'm going to pick the winner from that list very soon. But first, we have to hear from the community. What did they think? Best action platformer of the year is the easiest one that I could pick this year, and that is Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom. This is an incredible action platforming game where you turn into different monsters, traverse a Metroidvania style of world. I must play this year. I'm gonna give this to Pixel Ripped 1989, which is a weird throwback game where you play in VR with like a Game Boy, and you have to play that 2D side scroller while interacting with the world around you. You're in a classroom and in a schoolyard, and then those worlds merge. You're playing with a 2D side scroller on like the real world. It's crazy. It's weird. I've never played anything like it. It works wonderfully in VR. It's so much fun. It's so my pick for best action or platformer, uh, and I'm leaning a lot more towards platformer here, would be Celeste. It's crazy hard, but super rewarding when you actually make your way up the mountain. My favorite action adventure game has to be Spider-Man, and the main reason is, is because I just enjoyed exploring the open world of New York City so much. Not even just doing the story missions, which were fun on their own, but even the side missions and collecting all the bags, that alone was incredibly fun. It's one of those games that even after you finish it and get a platinum trophy. I just want to go more and just swing around because it's just that fun. There's a whole lot of web swing and action in Spider Man PS4. For me, the best action adventure game of 2018 is A Way Out, which is an incredible game, incredibly unique, and a game that I love a lot. It's like nothing I've really ever experienced before and I don't know if I'll ever experience anything like it again. It's a co-op game where you and your co-op partner share the screen at the same time for the entire duration of the game, and it allows for some really unique interactions between you and your co-op partner, and some really interesting and unique gameplay occurs because of that limitation. One of my favorite games this year. In any other year, Spider-Man would have been Game of the Year. I mean, 2018 has been so crazy loaded with great games that I can only give it, only give it my action-adventure pick for the year. But I mean, it just encapsulated all that it means to be a superhero. Excelsior, 
Rest in peace, Stan Lee. Spidey, game of the year. Game, action adventure, game of the year. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, what's up, dude? What was the best action adventure uh, game of 2018? 100% Assassin's Creed Odyssey. That's right. We loved Assassin's Creed Odyssey here. Kevin put in something like 96 hours. Woo! I've got 90? more than 85 hours in. What a game. Again, Assassin's Creed blowing us away. Taking so you know, they took a time off. They came back with Origins. It didn't click for most of us in the office. Then Odyssey comes out. Cassandra, an amazing character. Greece, an amazing place that felt like I was on a vacation. I just wanted to explore it all. Three different main storylines beats that were all interesting side quests that were engaging dialogue choices that really felt like i was making a choice as who my cassandra was uh then they keep patching it they keep putting in more content they keep putting in the ability to change that the Assassin's Creed Odyssey is not only one of the best games of this year, it is the best Assassin's Creed game of all time. Love that Greg hit on Assassin's Creed Odyssey. That is an incredible game, and uh, it's just unbelievable how many Assassin's Creed games there are, and it kind of gets lost in that, you know, giant pile of great titles that came out before it, but uh, Odyssey is something special, and good on Greg for bringing that up. We had some incredible action-adventure games this year. Let's go through these nominees for a second. So Celeste keeps coming back up, and that is because this game is not just a little indie darling, you know? It's not just tapping into nostalgia. Certainly, it plays with things that we are very familiar with. It plays with control mechanics, and it plays with racing from point A to point B across a two-dimensional play field, but it's just so finely tuned, and what really sets this game apart is that there's a story that actually connects with you as you're reading through the dialogue bubbles that pop up, and you see all the twists and turns that the developers put into this title. It is absolutely beautiful, something very special, and definitely deserving of being up against these big games like God of War, which shocked all of us because we weren't expecting to care so much about Kratos and his family, but somehow Corey Barlog and his team wrote us a, a perfect, mature take on what would happen if we looked at Kratos through the lens of, of the technology that we have available to us and the storytelling prowess that we have available to us post The Last of Us. And it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a, a little overwhelming. There's almost too much put into the basket by Rockstar and its teams, and you can feel that it's kind of bursting at the seams, but it's really hard to put down. It's really hard to kind of refute. There is a tremendous experience in this game. There is also a lot of time kind of spent getting from an experience to another experience, but it's still beautiful and engaging and addictive, and the recently released Red Dead Online Line takes the game to a whole new level as well. Red Dead Redemption 2, absolutely one of the best titles of the year. Astrobot Rescue Mission is our only VR title in this category, and it deserves it because this game would play beautifully even if it wasn't in VR. Astrobot is such a beautiful experience, and, and if there is one VR game that I encourage everybody to check out, it is absolutely that one. Uh, so congrats on your nomination, but I think you all know who has taken home the Rocket and Ray Gun prize in this category. It's Marvel's Spider-Man, which keeps coming up again and again. And it wasn't so much that this was a game that reinvented the superhero genre or reinvented Spider-Man games, for that matter, because there have been plenty of fantastic ones. It just had the whole package. It had all of the mechanics that you would want, all of the, you know, puzzle solving, all of the boss fights, and the it just felt fantastic to be Spider-Man. But then it was also wrapped up into a story that you really got invested in and you really cared for. It's an outstanding accomplishment and absolutely our action-adventure game of 2018. Right now, it is best racing game of 2018. Here are EPN's nominees. Forza Horizon 4, developed by Playground Games, published by Microsoft. Horizon Chase Turbo, developed and published by Aquirus Games. Onrush, developed by Codemasters, published by Deep Silver. Burnout Paradise Remastered, developed by Criterion Games, published by Electronic Arts. The Crew 2, developed by Ivory Tower, published by Ubisoft. Some outstanding racing experiences in that list for sure, and I think we all know who's probably going to take home this rocket and ray gun. Before I announce who the winner is going to be, though, I want to hear from our community. Best racing game of the year, in my opinion, should be Forza Horizon 4. Not even for like the tasks that you do in the game, but I've always been a Forza fan. I've always thought that they were the best racing games out there. It's just a personal preference, of course, of the kind of racing games you like to play. For me, it's not even about the race, though. It's about the fact that I can just drive. I just get in a car of my choice and just 
drive and it feels good and you have your tunes and it is just the visceral feeling of getting behind a wheel that you could never afford yourself. But in game, you flat baby and that's what I do. There's a racing game on the horizon and that racing game is Forza Horizon 4, the best racing game of the year. Have you not seen that game? It's starting to look too real, too real. I say Forza Horizon 4 is the best racing game of 2018. There's plenty of cars to collect. It has a huge open world, plenty of types of racing to compete in. It has to be Forza Horizon 4. Crazy fun, all sorts of different modes. You can play any way you really want, and it really reminds me a lot of Burnout Paradise. Forza Horizon 4, from the open world to the amount of cars, to the level of detail, to the whole car culture that they're really creating in this whole series. The idea that racing isn't just about the cars, it's about the culture, about the music that you listen to, about everything else, like your individual character on screen. They really went in a customizing road this time around, and I really appreciated that, and I can't wait to see what they do with the next one. The best racing game of 2018 for me is gonna be Forza Horizon 4, which is something they attained by further building on the amazing Forza Horizon series. But I did wanna give a small nod to my second favorite racing game of the year, which was Onrush. They did an incredible job with a super action-packed game. I'm actually gonna give it to Onrush because it was a pretty nice surprise. It's kind of a cool fusion between Burnout and MotorStorm, and it's really cool you actually get to play with a team, and you all try to get the most points by just ramming into the other team's cars, which is really awesome. By the time you're watching this video, this game is right now free on the PlayStation Plus for December, and probably afterwards it's gonna be really cheap, so I would really recommend it to just give it a shot. The Wipeout Omega Collection got a VR patch earlier in the year, and it was fantastic. Managed to transition the game beautifully to VR without losing any fidelity, still kept the high paced gameplay, multiplayer, action, three games in one. You can't lose with that game. It's phenomenal. If you own a PSVR headset, you need to buy that. It's great. There wasn't a lot of competition, but it doesn't matter because I think no matter what else would have been out there, Forza Horizon 4 would have been the clear winner in this category. It looks fantastic. It's a ton of fun to play. It's a super social game. It's just, you know, it's the best of the Forza Horizon series so far. Now, I don't think the Xbox got a lot of love this year, but it did in the racing department. Forza Horizon 4 was unbelievable. You know, driving around the hills of Scotland, the weather effects, the environments. I actually think it's my favorite racing game of all time. This may not be something you've heard of, but you absolutely need to pick it up because it is a very, very old school style racing game in the absolute best way possible. I love the fact that it's got like this real corridor aesthetic of it where a lot of times when you're trying to race around the track, you don't need to actually weave too much. You're sort of guided along and instead you need to worry about dodging your enemy cars, getting collectibles, and of course, using all the boosts you can to stay in first place. It is very, very addictive to sometimes just go to the same tracks over and over again simply because you want to try and improve your best time. Yeah, Horizon Chase Turbo is a very cool game. It sort of started life as a mobile title and it's on the Nintendo Switch now and I think it's on the other platforms as well. Super fun. On Rush is a completely different take on the idea of racing because it's really more about destruction and taking out your enemies, you know, clearly lifting on some great ideas from the Burnout franchise. Speaking of Burnout, Burnout Paradise Remastered from Criterion Games was a tremendous gift and I think we need to give Electronic Arts a round of applause for even bringing this game game to us. Extraordinary to play this game in 4K and to just be whizzing into all of the chaos and destruction that the game provides. Beautiful experience. The Crew 2 is also loaded with lots of improvisational flair and lots of, you know, shifting from vehicle to vehicle on the fly. Lots of exploration, lots of little secrets. You can take your photos all over the place. It's a gorgeous game as well for the size and scale of it. But Forza Horizon 4 is a force to be reckoned with. It's another incredible experience from Playground Games. These guys are so talented. The game is beautiful. We get, uh, you know, changing weather patterns. We get all kinds of English and Scottish countryside. We get James Bond vehicles. It is outstanding. It's fun to play. It's got a great soundtrack. The multiplayer is incredible. The depth is there. The vehicles to collect. And it's just a great escape. It's an absolute treasure. Forza Horizon 4 is our Rocket and Raygun Award winner for Best Racing Game of 2018.
We've got a huge category for you right now. This is the best Xbox One game of 2018. And what we did here is it wasn't just exclusives that we looked at, just like it wasn't on the PlayStation 4. These are games that just played great on this platform. We've got a list of five nominees. Let's take a look. Forza Horizon 4, developed by Turn 10 Studios and Playground Games. Far Cry 5, developed by Ubisoft Montreal and published by Ubisoft. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, developed by Ubisoft Quebec and published by Ubisoft. Red Dead Redemption 2, developed by Rockstar San Diego and Rockstar North, published by Rockstar Games. Monster Hunter World, developed and published by Capcom. All right, I'm gonna announce the winner for the best Xbox One game right after we hear from our community of fans and friends. It hasn't been the best year for Xbox fans when it comes to critically acclaimed games, but Forza Horizon 4 really stands out from the pack. If you just take a look at it, you can see that Playground Games has done nothing but raise the bar for racing games, and now open world racing games, where you can race around with a bunch of friends online, you can take a look at cars that look like they're straight off the showroom floor in real life, and of course you have seasons that change on the fly. This is the ultimate racing experience, so it had to get my Xbox Game of the Year. The Xbox One Game of the Year is going to go to Forza Horizon 4, in my opinion. There's so much to love about this game if you're a racing fan. From the online modes where you're constantly competing against your friend, to the campaign offline, it is just absurd how much content is in this game. They've put in elements that make it so addictive at times, you just want to put it down, but you can't. You want to do another race. The racing elements in the game and gameplay are by far the best we've ever seen in the Forza series. It is spectacular. The best Xbox One game in 2018 for me has to be Forza Horizon 4. Every time I analyze the Forza Horizon series, I think they've taken it to its utter limits, but for this one, they've yet again notched it up with the addition of seasons. Every time you play the game, it's gonna be a new season every week, and it really allows you to enjoy the map in various ways, online with your friends or solo by yourself, Tons of cars to customize, great graphics, great gameplay, Forza Horizon 4. Any other year, I think Assassin's Creed Odyssey would have had a shot at being Game of the Year, but I think that this year it really fits as the best Xbox One Game of the Year because Especially on the Xbox One X, the HDR colors and the uh, the 4K, if you have a 4K TV, really the best looking Assassin's Creed game, one of the most fun Assassin's Creed games yet. The best Xbox One game of 2018 is Red Dead Redemption 2. I was impressed with how gorgeous the visuals became playing it on the Xbox One X. My Xbox One game of the year is Red Dead because I only downloaded Dead Cells on my Switch and my PC. So my pick for best Xbox One game of the year is going to be Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The enhancements that it has for the Xbox One X, the Dolby Atmos support, the gameplay, the story, it really showcases exactly what the Xbox and the specifically the Xbox One X can really do. Now my pick for the best Xbox One game is a weird one. I pick the Xbox Game Pass, as in Forza Horizon 4, Sea of Thieves, and a giant library of modern third-party games. I would argue that Ponying up for Game Pass and counting that as a game, as a package, as a purchase, totally counts. Microsoft needed to play catch up against Sony and their big selling PlayStation 4, and they needed to do it with something like this, a subscription service that isn't just a bunch of old hat fare, but really new good games. Excellent commentary there from everybody. I really liked uh, Sam's take on the Xbox Game Pass, which I think is one of the best reasons to pick up the Xbox One. That and the backwards compatibility is extraordinary. Let's take a look at these nominees here for a second. Forza Horizon 4, already our best racing game of the year. It's a clearly distinctive title, beautiful experience, lots and lots of replayability. If you're into racing games, the Xbox One becomes incredibly attractive to you. Purely on the standpoint of this one game, absolutely incredible. Incredible. Far Cry 5 is a gorgeous experience. It, you know, it's like a 4K go anywhere you want game in the wilds of Montana, and it runs beautifully on the Xbox One, uh, especially the Xbox One X in 4K. Gorgeous work from Ubisoft. Likewise, with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I played on the Xbox One X as well in 4K with all the HDR and everything, a 
Assassin's Creed Odyssey is an extraordinary game and it really ran beautifully on Xbox One. I could also say that about Monster Hunter World, which is a massive game, really meant to be played with friends, lots of great environments to run around in, lots of great loot to pick up all over the place, and lots of killer little cat characters to talk to as well. Monster Hunter World is awesome. But the game that we're gonna choose as our winner for the Rocket and Ray Gun Award is Red Dead Redemption 2. I think a lot of people were sort of swayed by the fact that the game ran better on the Xbox One X. Even though a lot of the marketing around Red Dead Redemption 2 was paid for in some kind of a partnership with PlayStation, you know, word got out there that it ran better on the Xbox One X. That's where I played it, and it did. It ran wonderfully. It's a gorgeous game. Even if the HDR, there's there's reports of the HDR being a little bit uh, bogus or a little fiddled with, it still, it looked phenomenal. The sun sort of uh, setting over the mountains, the dust being kicked up by your horse as you're riding through trails, the, you know, even the opening sequences as you're riding through the snow and you can't see anywhere, but it still looks amazing, you know? It's a beautiful game, and if you've got an Xbox One or an Xbox One X, you probably already got this in your collection, but it definitely deserves to be there. Red Dead Redemption 2 is our best Xbox One game of 2018. We're going to move on to our next category, and we wanted to honor the best-looking video games of 2018. Many, many gorgeous games this year. Let's move on to the best graphics of 2018, and our nominees are Sea of Thieves, developed by Rare, published by Microsoft Studios. Red Dead Redemption 2, developed by Rockstar San Diego and Rockstar North, published by Rockstar Games. Marvel's Spider-Man, developed by Insomniac Games and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Forza Horizon 4, developed by Playground Games and published by Microsoft Studios. And God of War, developed by Sony Santa Monica and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Incredible looking games there. I think you can tell that we are talking about state of the art for our industry. I'm going to give you our pick for the best looking game of 2018. But first, we want to hear from the community. I want to say either God of War or Spider-Man, but then you look at a game like Forza and you're like, that's a beautiful looking game. It's a beautiful game. I'm gonna give it to Forza. The game looks incredible. These cars just look too realistic. Again, it's like one of those things where, when does the realism stop and the video game begin? Keep you on the horizon. Pick for best graphics of 2018 has to go to one of the oldest looking games of the year, Return of the Obra Dinn. This is an incredible murder mystery game and I love it for a lot of reasons, but arguably its most revolutionary aspect is that it takes one bit graphics, as in black and white pixels, no shades of gray, no other colors, and creates an entire living, breathing 3D world. I've never seen a game achieve this kind of thing that goes back to the early Apple IIe and Macintosh look and makes a 3D world you can walk around in that looks like those old games. Unbelievable stuff. Best graphics of 2018 goes to Battlefield 5 because of the support for the new ray tracing stuff that NVIDIA introduced. Having that stuff on, even if it hurts the frames per second, it still makes everything look as realistic uh, as I've ever seen a game look. In VR, it has to be a race between Moss, Wipeout, and Tetris Effect. And I love Tetris Effect, it looks absolutely amazing, but didn't quite use VR the way it should have. Wipeout was a stellar upgrade to VR, uh, everything looked absolutely amazing. But I'm gonna give the edge to Moss. The world created, the scale used, it just puts you in the game like nothing else this year. That is my best looking VR game of 2018. A lot of really good looking games in 2018, but I mean, you gotta give this one to Red Dead Redemption 2. The world looks so realistic, so amazing. The animation from every little action you do, the character modeling, everything about this game looks good. You can tell that Rockstar put many, many years, perhaps too many years, of work into this game. My pick for best graphics has to be Red Dead Redemption 2. Beautiful detailing and texturing, including the snow, the buildings, the mountains, the characters, the clothes they were wearing. I even found that the lighting in it sure looked beautiful, especially with the sun. Red Dead Redemption 2, how could it go to any other game? When I turned on that game, I wasn't looking at a game anymore. I was looking at a simulation of real life, the old Western style world and it brought me in. I couldn't believe the motion capturing on the horses going through the snow. I'm like, how is this even possible? But it, it set graphics to a brand new standard, and it wasn't just graphics, it was motion capturing to a brand new standard for video games. The best graphics of 2018 for me go to Red Dead Redemption 2 on my Xbox One X. This is an experience that is just truly remarkable. What Rockstar has done here with the level of detail 
really shows when you're playing in 4K, and there are things in this game that you will not see in any game. The detail on the horses, the terrain, the world, everything is so mind-blowing, and everything you look at is like a painting. It is truly the best looking game of the year, and that's why it gets the best graphics of 2018. It has to go to Red Dead Redemption. And while the game does look terrific, what really won it for me are all the cinematic angles. The moment you start riding with your horse and you can just toggle all those different angles that look like they were taken from a Western movie, it just looks absolutely breathtaking. I have no idea how Rockstar did it, but I applaud them. This is by far the best looking game they have ever made, and it's a worthy winner. We also heard from a couple of people that rode in as well. Paul Adamson said that Detroit Become Human was the best looking game of 2018, and that was a gorgeous game for sure. Graham Coombs says the best graphics of 2018 are for Warhammer Vermintide 2. He thought that the uh, hack and slash gameplay just was super, super cool looking in that title. Thank you for everybody that contributed their uh, points and their comments about some of the best looking games this year. Uh, I think if we look at all of these, God of War is absolutely gorgeous. The Norse uh, mythology that was interwoven into the story of Kratos and uh, Atreus is absolutely wonderful. The monster designs, just even the new look of Kratos. He's so menacing and so fearsome, but also human. Uh, sea of Thieves was just gorgeous. It was definitely stylized and definitely cartoony, but uh, the beauty was not to be dismissed. It was, you know, beautiful HDR lighting. I remember seeing my first sunset while I was out on the open seas and I was just floored by the gorgeousness of it. And of course we have, you know, mythical beasts and skeletons and all kinds of different creatures and other pirates that you're going to encounter. Great looking game. Spider-Man was absolutely gorgeous right from uh, all the different suit designs. One of my favorite suits is like taking the old classic cartoon suit and sticking it into the almost photo real New York City that Insomniac created for us and just seeing that weird juxtaposition. Beautiful game. Forza Horizon 4 also an exceptional looking title as well. Very close to photo real with the vehicles and the locations. Uh, it's a gorgeous game. But I think I think our winner, as most of the people that sent us videos would agree with, is Red Dead Redemption 2, which isn't so much about the, you know, facial animation and the capture there. There's some excellent work there, but it's more about the totality of the visual fidelity and the experience. It's the it's the environments. It's, uh, you know, the, the smoke and the dust as you walk into a saloon or you go to a general store. There's just so much attention to detail and in the world, in the animals. It's absolutely breathtaking, particularly if you're playing it on on, um, you know, the Xbox One X or the PlayStation 4 Pro. Presumably, Rockstar is going to do something very similar to what they did with Grand Theft Auto V, and Red Dead Redemption 2 will even be enhanced to a further degree with the PlayStation 5 and whatever Xbox has got up its sleeve. But still, in 2018, this was a staggering accomplishment. That's why Red Dead Redemption 2 is our winner for Best Graphics of 2018. We're moving on to our next category, which is a big one. It's the best role-playing game of 2018. Here are our nominees. Octopath Traveler, developed by Square Enix and Acquire and published by Square Enix and Nintendo. Nino Kuni 2, developed by Level 5 and published by Bandai Namco. Dragon Quest XI, developed and published by Square Enix. Monster Hunter World, developed and published by Capcom. Moonlighter, developed by Digital Sun and published by 11-Bit Studios. All right, uh, I've got my winner. I'm gonna tell you guys what that is in a second, but first let's hear from our fans and our friends. Now at the Game Awards, Monster Hunter Worlds won RPG of the Year. That's debatable for me. The best RPG of the year is Dragon Quest XI. The team knocked it out of the park. It's the best looking Dragon Quest game. I think it's a little bit easier than the past games, but my God, the world setting, the environments, the monsters, the combat, Unbelievable. And a lot of people complained about the music. I think the music is really good. I'm pretty sure Happy Console Gamer would like me to say this. Dragon Quest XI. It was the very first game in the series that I've ever delved to, and I can see why Yuji Horii's classic is beloved by so many people. Plus, Akira Toriyama's graphical style and beautiful 4K looks absolutely stunning. I had to go with Dragon Quest XI. Now this is a traditional JRPG straight up, but 
for old school fans like myself playing the old Dragon Warrior games and the old Dragon Quest games, specifically the one on the PS2, Dragon Quest VIII, I knew I was going to have a good time with this game, and I did. 70 hours straight forward with the story, only to unlock more endgame content after the credits. This is a fully packed RPG experience that any old school fan or even new school fans should try out. Not only that, but of course, you take Akira Toriyama and you mix his art with Unreal Engine 4 and you have a beautiful game to take a look at. My pick for best RPG of the year is going to be Moonlighter. I'm giving that one to Delta Rune. This was a surprise, right? Delta Rune Chapter 1 was released by Toby Fox by surprise for free on his website. Uh, this is the spiritual successor or sequel or spinoff or something of Undertale, and I loved Undertale, but this is even better than that. The gameplay, the, it was just really fun. The characters were great. The world itself, again, just kind of sucked me right in, seeing those old characters with some new stuff mixed in. I just loved it. Monster Hunter World is my pick for best RPG of 2018 because I really enjoyed the online multiplayer component of that game. It's just really great to have friends help you deal with these major threats against these big monsters. And it's great to use the items collected from these monsters to create some more powerful weapons and armor. And I sure had lots of fun when I played with Vic on that game. Honestly, 2018 wasn't the best year for RPGs, but Nino Kumi 2 really stands out because visually it's stunning. It looks exactly like an anime and it looks like you're playing an anime. And I did like the combat I found that when I increased the difficulty in the combat, I liked it a lot, and it was really satisfying. I have to award my pick of the very best RPG to Octopath Traveler, and that's mostly because I am somebody who is utterly in love with Final Fantasy. I have literally beaten every single one of them multiple times over, and this really feels like a nice step past that. Yes, in many ways it feels like a sequel to Final Fantasy VI, but it's also something that just manages to have a really great combat system, some cool chances to have great side quests, and a lot of different secrets. I really like an RPG nowadays that can constantly surprise me even 80 hours into the adventure, and this one really manages to encapsulate that and give it all a really charming look simultaneously. I recently stated that I didn't really get into RPG RPGs until I got old. You could see with my gray beard, but now I'm playing as many as possible. But my 2018 RPG of the year goes to Dragon Quest XI. There is nothing like this. The art design is something else. It takes you into a world that is just the vision of the creator. And once you're in that world, you don't want to leave it. It's highly addictive, it's very rewarding, and it really is something that is going to push your buttons at times, make you think, make you strategize. But at other times, it's just this whimsical fairy tale that you just love being in. One game that I really loved, surprisingly, was Dragon Quest XI. I've never played a Dragon Quest game before. I'm not a huge fan of JRPGs to begin with, but this game sucked me in. It's a beautiful looking game. It's got a story that's easy to follow. Look at you, Kingdom Hearts. And just, the character design is fantastic. It's a really great game. If you're leery about JRPGs like I am, give Dragon Quest XI a try, and I don't think you're gonna be disappointed. The RPG that stole my heart this year was Octopath Traveler. Uh, on paper, this is a game I should not be interested in. I have no affinity or nostalgia for the RPGs of old, but something about that beautiful art style of Octopath, and then jumping in and meeting a cast of characters whose sto origin stories I really connected with, and then having it be my go-to playing game for so long, jump in there, do battle, all right, I'm not strong enough, go grind, come back, take on side quests. Octopath Traveler is something really, really special if you can get a guy like me to invest that much time in it. Paul Adamson also wrote in and said that his best RPG or his favorite RPG of the year is Octopath Traveler for Nintendo Switch. Let's get into, uh, uh, and I, you know, obviously a lot of fans there for Dragon Quest XI, which is an exceptional traditional role-playing experience, but the thing about Dragon Quest, as we all know, is that it's filled with wonderful characters with a sense of humor, always cartoony, always accessible, but there's a tremendous amount of depth and there's a, a definitely a state-of-the-art kind of design imbued in that title. So so it will keep you engrossed for hours and hours and hours. There's lots to explore, lots of different areas to travel to. Wonderful, wonderful work from uh, from Square Enix there. Nino Kuni 2 from Level 5 was also one of these games that, uh, you know, interwove different kinds of styles. It also has a very cartoony art look to 
it again. Like Dragon Quest XI, though, Nino Kuni 2 is not an exceptionally difficult game to play. You can really kind of work your way through. It's more just about the time commitment and sort of being engaged by the story. But two wonderful games that are, you know, almost uh, off the same bookshelf in a way, you know? Monster Hunter World definitely sort of veers into the more action-oriented space where you're hunting monsters, as the name implies. But what they've done with this game is they, well, A, made it look state-of-the-art and beautiful for 2018, but they've also made it much more accessible. And this was kind of a big investment and a big risky move, backed by lots and lots of data on Capcom's part that people will get, you know, sucked in and love this type of experience, but they hadn't really invested like this in the console space, and boy, are they glad that they did. It's become one of the biggest hits that Capcom has. Uh, I had a great time playing Monster Hunter World. It's a super, super cool franchise. Uh, Moonlighter took me by storm this year, first on the PlayStation 4 and then on Nintendo Switch. It's not so much that it's a brand new idea, it's just the coming together of two separate ideas in a really elegant and fun and addictive way. You know, hunting and adventuring and getting into hack and slash types of uh, battles with enemies converged with selling the wares that you pick up as you're you know, navigating through these treacherous dungeons, and it was just so smart. You felt uh, connected to your village and to the people that would be your customers, and then you sort of felt like, okay, well, I've got to go and be a hero, but I've also got to run my business well, and you got to get as deep as you can into these dungeons. It's a really, really fun hook, and I love this game. That leaves... Octopath Traveler, and that is my choice for best RPG of 2019, and I know that a lot of hardcores out there, I've had this conversation with my friend Johnny Millennium, he felt like the story was derivative in Octopath Traveler, or something that we've seen many times before, but for me, what brought me into Octopath Traveler was that it really honored where I was first introduced to Japanese RPGs, which was on the Super Nintendo and Final Fantasy 3. This felt like a, I don't know, just like a fishing hook that brought me right back to that time, you know, and all all of the ways that I would imagine my experience of playing Final Fantasy 3, which was, as we all know, really Final Fantasy 6 in Japan, it really took me back, you know, and it blew my mind because when I played Final Fantasy 3, when I saw all those graphics on screen, in my mind, they looked like what Octopath Traveler looks like in 2018. You know, everything was popping off the screen and all of the backgrounds were just so intricately detailed and so ornate. And that's what I saw when I was playing Octopath Traveler. I don't think they planned for this thing to be the runaway hit that it became, but it was an incredibly important title for the platform, for the companies, and for us as players with a nostalgic streak in us, you know, which games constantly tap into. And I think Octopath Traveler hit on all of those different uh, levels and it was just an exceptional escape. I just love, love this game. And that's why I am picking Octopath Traveler as the best RPG of 2018. And man, was this a hard category. We're moving on to our next category right now, which is kind of a, a complicated one because of all the genre bending and crossovers and stuff that are happening in video games these days. Let's move on to Best Adventure, and we're gonna start with EPN's nominees. Moss, developed and published by Polyarch. Return of the Obra Dinn, developed by Lucas Pope and published by 3909 LLC. Minute, developed by Vlambeer and published by Devolver Digital. Florence, developed by Mountains and published by Annapurna Interactive. Subnautica, developed and published by Unknown Worlds Entertainment. All right, some excellent games there, and we're going to announce the winner for Best Adventure Game. But first, let's go to our fans and to our friends in the community. The best adventure game has to be Moss. Controlling Quill as like a spirit guide while still being in that world, solving puzzles, battling little robots, and then getting to that boss. It was a phenomenal experience. Anyone can play it. I guarantee you'll love it. That's my best adventure game of 2018. My pick for best adventure game is going to be Shadow of the Tomb Raider because that game just makes you feel like a complete badass while really engaging you in a giant adventure and a great story. For Best Adventure, I'm gonna go with God of War, which I know it's not technically adventure, it's kind of an action adventure. Just exploring the wonderful Norse realms like Midgar was just a wonderful experience on its own. And I do think that Sony Santa Monica Studio deserves some credit, so even though it's a little bit bending the rules here, I would still give God of War as my favorite adventure of 2018. I'm gonna go with Red Dead Redemption 2. Simply put, probably the best open world experience that I've ever had to date. There are a lot of open world 
old games out there, but nothing made me feel like I was really in the West or really in that environment like Red Dead Redemption 2. It was just unbelievable experiencing real-time events that would just happen out of the blue as I was randomly walking around causing these adventures to take place. So if I decided I wanted to go fishing, a bear might show up and try to steal my fish, or I might be robbed, or I'll decide, well, maybe I should rob somebody. When you have that many, uh, you know, crazy events happening around you, that's just an adventure. You know, I'm gonna give Best Adventure God of War. I really enjoyed me God of War. It came out early in the year. If there wasn't as many boys, I feel like it would have been highly marked on some of the other categories, but God of War, definitely. Boy! Yeah, as you can see, the picks for best adventure game are all over the map because adventure is a big part of almost every story-driven narrative experience these days. So it can be a little bit confusing. Um, I'm going to break down our nominees, but first we got a vote that was written in from uh, Paul Adamson and it's another one for God of War, which I think does qualify as an adventure game, which is crazy because, you know, the previous God of War games have all just been hack and slash. There's been great story in them, but it's just been like kill as many things as you can till the end. and you just see Kratos get super angry. Uh, but God of War has definitely evolved. Uh, but let's look at our nominees here for a second. Moss took my uh, breath away when I played this game. Polyarch made something that was so transportive and wonderful and beautiful. The characters, the sort of fiction and fantasy that was interwoven and intermingled with the VR experience of putting the headset on and just sort of being you know, living in that world was so profound, such a beautiful accomplishment. It really left me wanting more, which I think is uh, the great sign of an excellent story, and that's absolutely what Moss is. That's why it qualifies there. Return of the Obra Dinn is something that I kept hearing about through the course of the year. I finally had a chance to play it for a little while, and it is an absolutely killer game. It's very minimalist. It's kind of like green and black. It looks like uh, something that you might play on a Kindle or something. The graphics are very stripped down. Down, but it's a 3D sort of exploration detective adventure where you're trying to figure out this giant mystery of, uh, you know, who has died on this big ship. Florence is a beautiful game that uh, was developed for uh, phones, and it's basically like a story that you can, you can play through, and it's about how love just sort of happens and the magic of it and the and the sort of unexplained qualities of it and it's a really really sweet exploration of that and it's heartfelt and it's uh, emotional but it's also beautifully designed and I encourage everybody to check that out it costs less than a latte so you have no excuse to download that thing to your iPhone or your Android uh, Subnautica is also a very trippy um, uh, you know survival exploration adventure game which uh, obviously takes place underwater with some really cool technologies beautiful Beautiful looking game. It's a super cool experience. I understand there's a VR version of Subnautica as well, which I have not played, but that seems like the perfect way to appreciate this game. My choice for best adventure game of the year is a very different type of title. It's called Minute, and it lives up to its name. You have 60 seconds to uh, get a lot of stuff done, and then you're dead, and then you got to start again. You get to carry some of the uh, the lessons and some of the gadgets and things that you pick up along the way. It's very much like a you know top-down Zelda style adventure, but you have to kind of re playing sequences and, and you're, you're trying to speed things along and every conversation that you get into could be the last one you ever have and it's very profound you know that idea like the clock is ticking let's go let's get on with this life is really amazing and it's just so intelligently crafted and very minimalist again it's black and white but it's a super cool game and I encourage everybody to check out Minute. It is our winner for best adventure game of 2018. We're moving on to our next one, which is Best Action Game or Shooter, and we've got lots of great nominees for you. Let's take a look at them right now. Far Cry 5, developed by Ubisoft Montreal and published by Ubisoft. Call of Duty Black Ops 4, developed by Treyarch and published by Activision. Destiny 2, The Forsaken Expansion, developed by Bungie and published by Activision. Firewall Zero Hour, developed by First Contact Entertainment, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Battlefield 5, developed by EA Dice and published by Electronic Arts. All right, I'm going to give you guys my pick and EPN's pick for the best action game or shooter of 2018. But first, we have to hear from the community out there. So for me, the best action or shooter game of 2018 is Far Cry 5. 
My favorite shooter of the year has got to be Red Dead Redemption, and that is coming from someone who wasn't a huge fan of the first one. I think it controls better, I think it looks better, but more importantly, it actually makes you feel as a badass outlaw of the Wild West. Doing cool tricks like the dead eye technique and shooting a few people when time slows down and they all just fall like flies, that to me signifies a great shooter, when you can actually nail all those shots and feel like a complete unstoppable force. Red Dead Redemption 2, with its incredibly large and detailed world, well-told story, relatable yet crazy characters, and overall attention to detail. It's just an incredible game all around and is a complete package in my opinion. Cheers were rough this year. Cheers were rough this year. Um, let's see, my favorite shooter of the year 2018. I'm gonna give it to the V. The BFV. Because if they throw any more numbers or letters in there, it's just gonna get way too confusing. So my favorite shooter of 2018 has to go to Firewall Zero Hour. It's a four on four tactical shooter in the vein of Rainbow Six but putting it in VR makes it so much more immersive. When you're looking down the sights, creeping around corners, coordinating with your team, it's some of the most fun I've had in VR and some of the most fun multiplayer I've had in a long time. I love it. My pick for the very best shooter of 2018 has to be Call of Duty Black Ops and that's kind of mind blowing to me because normally I'm pretty big COD hater, but this newest one, despite the fact that it is just multiplayer, is so freaking tight. I love having a battle royale mode, I love the zombies, I love just the basic multiplayer where you're running around and trying to accomplish different objectives. And for that, I actually have to tip my hat to Activision for trying something so different and really having the experience experiment pay off. The Call of Duty franchise is feeling a little bit played out, but Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and particularly the Battle Royale mode, it was something surprisingly great this year. I think we're all getting a little bit Battle Royaled out, I know I am, but leave it to Activision, leave it to the Call of Duty franchise to bring this in as an add-on to their already solid multiplayer game and actually kind of refresh Battle Royale, make it fun, make it look really great. <laughs> Never would have expected it, but Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is my action or shooter game of the year. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we got another vote for Call of Duty Black Ops 4, actually from uh, Graham Coombe, who says the most polished shooter of the year, Call of Duty always knows how to do it right. And he gives it a 9.5 out of 10 on the Graham scale. Uh, Paul Adamson wrote in and said his favorite action uh, game or shooter is Far Cry 5. Both of those games are incredible. Let's take a look at our nominees here, though. Uh, we've got uh, Far Cry 5 from Ubisoft Montreal, which really was an impressive undertaking. They took us into the wilds of Montana, they had us hunting all kinds of ferocious animals, sometimes taming them, and they become our friends, and then they become ferocious animals on our side, which is pretty damn cool. It was a really, really fun experience. It was great to get lost into that world, and Ubisoft Montreal definitely needs to be commended for that. I was honestly a huge fan of Destiny 2 Forsaken. I'm still into the game. I've been playing it sort of all year long, getting caught up on different expansions. I was very impressed with Forsaken, though, taking us in and sort of twisting a lot of the, uh, the narrative and a, a lot of the familiar around in different ways. And it's just an ex a super fun game to play with other people. And this is what happens when I jump into Destiny 2. Suddenly I've got a partner or a couple partners who are, you know, playing with me. But more often than not, they're helping me because they're like level 50 and they've got everything. They've got all kinds of cool weapons and they're sort of guiding me and, and sort of re-educating me. One thing that I, I really kind of noticed when I jumped back into Destiny 2 again was like, wow, I forgot what all the icons mean and where I got to go and what I have to do. But I always have a great time provided I'm playing with other people and I think that is the secret to why Destiny 2 persists. It's an extraordinary escape with friends and Forsaken was really really fun. Firewall Zero Hour, I think we have to give them an award for the worst game name of 2018 because it's impossible to remember that one but the VR grid is right. It is a terrific shooter. I had an excellent time playing with this one as well. It's kind of like Counter-Strike or a Rainbow Six type of experience but in VR. The mechanics are tight and again it's, it's it's an excellent one to play with friends because it's all about team play and, and wiping out the other guys before they wipe you out. Battlefield 5, I think, uh, has some exceptional production quality and 
uh, some really terrific design work. They've always excelled at uh, uh, giving you a ton of toys in the toy box and lots of room for lots of people racing at each other and trying to kill each other in different camps and get to those objectives first. But it also feels like it's being parsed out a little bit. The fact that there was no Battle Royale game in a game that seems so, uh, yet, that seems so suited for Battle Royale felt a little weird. But hard to argue with the beauty of it. I also love the vignettes, the single player vignettes. It, it was a terrific game and I think EA and DICE seem to be committed to make it more terrific as time goes on. So by, you know, middle of 2019, I think it's going to become the battlefield force to be reckoned with. That kind of leaves Call of Duty Black Ops 4 as the one that I would choose as the best shooter of 2018, best action sort of core experience of 2018. You know, some shocking decisions there, removing the single player component because the Black Ops games have always been pretty elaborate with single player, but actually the game has really benefited from the uh, Battle Royale experience. Blackout is awesome, and it really ties together a lot of, you know, core, familiar Call of Duty experiences and, and weapons and design conceits. It just makes you feel like such a badass, you know? You, you really do feel like if you've got some skills and some familiarity with that world and you can do all right, riding the ranks in there just feels incredible. It's a really, really fun experience, but I do feel that Call of Duty shouldn't remove single player fully. It was missed in Call of Duty Black Ops 4. However, that didn't stop Call of Duty Black Ops 4 from winning the Rocket and Raygun Award for Best Action Game or Shooter. We're moving on to our next category, which is Best Nintendo Switch Game. And a note here, this doesn't have to be exclusive to Nintendo Switch. These are games that just play exceptionally well on this particular platform. Let's take a look at EPN's nominees. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, developed by Bandai Namco Studios and Sora, published by Nintendo. Celeste, developed and published by Map Makes Games. Dead Cells, developed and published by Motion Twin. Owlboy, developed and published by D-Pad Studio. Hollow Knight, developed and published by Team Cherry. All right, a lot of awesome indie games in this particular category. The Switch really proved itself to be an excellent platform for indie entertainment. And I'm going to give you our winner for best Switch game of the year. But first, we have to hear from our community. One of my favorite games on the Nintendo Switch this year has been Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and its counterpart, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, which I haven't played, but I played the Pikachu one and it's pretty much the same game. You know how Pokemon is. They release two titles and there's characters and Pokemon that you can only get in one and then you gotta trade with a friend so you can catch them all and be the very best like no one ever was. And I've been having a lot of fun with this title since it came out. I love the fact that you can play it on the go. This is a nice concession between the old school Pokemon games that were actually quite in-depth RPG experiences and a nice bridge to uh, the players who actually play Pokemon Go on their mobile phones and there's still quite a lot of them around uh, Toronto and, and I see people play this almost every time that I'm out. Something that I really like about this game is that there's this new Pokeball Plus accessory and you can play the entire game just using the Pokeball. So it leaves your other hand open for snacks which you gotta be eating while you're playing video games. Try to keep it healthy though. The honor for best Nintendo Switch game in my opinion is Smash Brothers Ultimate. This game waves some sort of magic wand to deliver 65 unique characters worth of combat. That's insane for a fighting game to achieve balance and character diversity, but getting everybody back along with new characters, there are so many mechanics to pick through just to have fun with the base feeling of fighting against friends. And that says nothing for the rest of the single player campaign, which just keeps the game going and going has to be Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Not only it's a fun fighting game, it has all those cool unique characters and all those old stages coming back in HD graphics, but it's a love letter from Nintendo, especially from all the different graphics and music. It just makes me happy inside and there is no other game in 2018 that even came close to how much I loved Super Smash Bros. Ultimate on the Nintendo Switch. Gee, let me think. Um, Dead Cells? Yes. Why? Because Dead Cells is amazing. It's finally out for everyone to play on everything. Download it on your Switch, on your consoles. Download it, take it with you on the go. Dead Cells, Dead Cells, more Dead Cells. Octopath Traveler. And the reason for that is that that just plays off my nostalgia of Final Fantasy 4 and 6 from my Super Nintendo days growing up in that. This game feels just like how I remember Final Fantasy 6. I know they're a completely different game, but this is what it feels like. This just feels new, this new immersive 
experience with that old style of graphics with some of the 3D. I just love that. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And it's just because not only is it one of the biggest fighting games of the year, but it's also just got such a great balance to it. Getting in matches online, playing on the hundreds of different stages, and listening to the over a thousand soundtrack pieces is so freaking great. But honestly, when it really comes down to it, it's just about picking Link and smashing all of my friends' faces in. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I mean, it is ridiculous. The roster is gigantic with so many characters. You will go over all of them. It will take a hundred hours easily before you choose the character you want to use when you battle against friends. And the best part is battle against friends anywhere because it's on the Switch. Pull the controllers out and boom, you're playing anywhere. Second of all, there's so much content in this game, I, I just am blown away by it. So my pick for best Switch game of the year is going to be Super Mario Party. I've recently played it uh, at our Thanksgiving with a group of friends and it really lived up to the initial pitch that Nintendo had with the Switch where you, you, know, you take it to a rooftop and then set it up and then play a bunch of games with your friends. Uh, Mario Party, much more so that experience than anything like 1-2 Switch or anything. I had to go with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This is a packed game. It's on a tiny cartridge, but it has a ton of stuff to unlock and do in this game. Over 74 characters, 103 stages, which are just gonna keep growing with downloadable content, and over 1,000 tracks of music. You're always doing something in this game. And I mean, it's Smash Bros. We all have fun playing it. If you're gonna talk about the best Nintendo Switch game of the year, there are dozens of games, I think, that make a compelling argument for that being their title. But in the end, right? It's got to be Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Like, the way that game has unified this office around the one TV in the back lounge, the fact that we all want to get through our work as fast as possible to sit there and play hours on end just so uh, Nick can suck someone in his Kirby and then fly off the stage and spit them out. Uh, <laughs> we want to stream it. We want to play it. When we're not playing here, we'll go to somebody's house and play. Like, when we're not playing together, we all play individually to come back together and play. Uh, uh, Smash Brothers, I think. You know, yes, it's got the uh, benefit of nostalgia on its side, but it's also got the fa it's got the bones, uh, the DNA of just an amazing game. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. The new vast roster of characters playable in Smash is a dream come true, not only to me, but any gamer out there. The franchise itself holds a special place in my heart. I bonded with many friends over this game, and it's my pick. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I was very surprised with the additions of the new characters. The music sounded very awesome. The online play, very smooth. An amazing game to play either at home or on the go. There are so many great games out there on the Switch. Just check out the eShop. There's lots of cool sales. Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. It never gets old to punch Nazis or shoot them. If you're into a bit more of a frustrating gameplay experience, check out N++. I really liked A Night in the Woods, too. Kind of a, a, a slow burn of a creepy game with very cute characters, but there's some very mature and unexpected themes in that one if you haven't actually played it before. So there's a lot to play on the Nintendo Switch. All right, a lot of picks for Smash there. We got another one actually. Paul Adamson wrote in and said Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is his pick for best uh, Switch game of the year. Uh, let's take a look at our nominees here. Celeste, developed and published by Map Makes Games. Unbelievable platformer, really, really well designed. It's an amazing game, and it's already won some Rocket and Reagan Awards. Dead Cells is Jose's obsession. He's talked about this one a lot, and I've played a hell of a lot of Dead Cells this year, as I'm sure many of you Switch fans have as well. Excellent game, and it's a great fit on the Nintendo platform. Owl Boy, I would say exactly the same thing about it. It's been around for a while because it was, uh, I think, first published in 2016, but it made its way to uh, consoles this year, especially on the Nintendo Switch, and that's where I played it. Really lovely game. And Hollow Knight is, again, another Metroidvania, but with uh, some different design ideas. This Dark Soulsian challenge that it's got is really compelling and frustrating. You'll die often, but it's so cool and so mysterious and evocative and moving and uh, really, really wonderful game. But I think it's pretty clear the reason why we are doing Nintendo Switch a little bit later in the week is we wanted to give people a little bit of time to play Super Smash Bros. Ultimate because we had a feeling that Nintendo was going to kill it with this game, and they have. This title is so fantastic. It's so loaded with content, so loaded with delight and surprise and laughs and 
challenge and great as a single player game. It's fantastic as a multiplayer game. It's a party game. It's uh, it's honestly, it's like it, it's like a living, breathing Christmas tree. There's just gifts, 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 gifts all over the place underneath this thing. So much fun. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, you are much more than just a fighting game, and you truly live up to your name. You are our Rocket and Ray Gun Award winner for Best Nintendo Switch Game of 2018. We're moving on to our next category right now, which is a little bit different. This is the best game news of 2018. Let's take a look at our nominees. Cross-platform multiplayer and the willingness of competitors to work together for the betterment of games. Nintendo's Reggie fils Xbox's Phil Spencer, and Sony's Sean Layden on stage together at the Game Awards. The epic success of Epic Games and their brand new game store. The spectacular success of Spider-Man and what that means for Insomniac. The rise of video game streaming from the cloud and what that means for the future. All right, some very interesting topics and subjects to dive into, and I'm about to do that and pick our winner for best news of 2018. But first, let's hear from the community. When you want to talk about the best gaming news of 2018, I think it's an overarching headline that... Epic Games is awesome. They are the biggest thing going with Fortnite right now. And I think so many people, and I shouldn't say people, so many companies would let that go to their head in a bad way. But Epic this year stepped up to the plate and went the complete opposite with that, right? The the idea originally that came out like, hey, we understand that we're making a lot of money, so we're gonna take less money from the creators who are putting stuff on our creation tools for our engine. Then the idea of, hey, we think crossplay is a big deal. Uh, we're gonna push for that and we'll get it on Xbox. We'll get Switch working too. They're talking to each other. PlayStation's not. We're going to push for change to get PlayStation involved and PlayStation bent. PlayStation said, okay, you're right. This is the right thing. They all come together. And then now on the heels of Steam coming out and being like, we're going to give the biggest games, the biggest developers, the biggest publishers a break if they sell this much, but keep the little guy in the same pinch of revenue scheme. Epic comes out and says, all right, here's the Epic game store. And it's the same uh, revenue split for everybody that's better than most on Steam. Epic, I mean, it's really good guy Epic this year, right? Like they came out, they had this uh, unfathomable success, right? Beyond, I think, most game developer or publisher's wildest dreams. They have this runaway year and they use it all for good. Best game news of 2018 is Vivendi not doing the hostile takeover of Ubisoft. That was a big deal. Ubisoft employs a lot of Canadian game developers. They just opened up a new studio in Winnipeg, which is a big deal for me being a Winnipeg-based kind of guy. That was just really great news to see that they could just kind of be free from that fear moving forward. So I was very happy to hear that. Well, at first I was going to say it was the announcement of the PlayStation Classic. Just the fact that somebody else is getting behind this classic thing the whole turnout of it could have been a little bit better the best news of the year was having nintendo and xbox and sony playstation all on stage at the game awards unifying games talking about the togetherness that is video games because that's really what it should be all about everybody coming together for the gamers and the people that are playing the games and not fighting about games nonsense my best gaming news of 2018 has to be that dreams coming up on the ps4 is getting full VR support. Dreams is a game creation tool coming to console, so anyone can make just about anything. VR obviously isn't quite at the level of regular console games, but Dreams is gonna make people, it's gonna push them to that level, and it's gonna be a fantastic experience, and I can't wait to get my hands on that game. So my pick for best game news of 2018 is sort of an amalgamation of news uh, events that happen. The general, it's coming to Switch news that came up a lot in 2018 was pretty much my favorite news I whenever I would hear something was coming to Switch because the Switch is my current favorite console. I have it with me pretty much all the time and any chance I get to play something on the go, I'll do that. I'm actually gonna give it to Spyro the Big Dino Trilogy because a lot of people were pretty much hyping a Spyro remake ever since Crash Bandicoot got his turn in the spotlight. People kept asking, where's Spyro? Where's Spyro? Is Spyro gonna happen? And then there were rumors about this purple egg that showed up at some people's places hyping Spyro. And then the trailer shows up and everyone goes bananas. And everyone were waiting for September for the game to be released, but it got delayed so people got worried. But it finally came out and if you're a huge fan of Spyro like myself, it was a huge treat. 
Yes, as we expected, the best game news meant that ideas for what that would mean would be all over the map. We got some great feedback there from everybody. Thank you so much for that. Paul Adamson also wrote in and said Xbox Game Pass. Microsoft releasing their biggest titles to Game Pass at or shortly after release really makes the service a must for all Xbox One owners. And Graham Coombs said the best game news of 2018 was Epic Games establishing its own game service. And uh, yeah, we did have some incredible news there. And I think, you know, there's two categories are two uh, nominees that kind of fit right hand in hand with each other and that is cross-platform multiplayer which we started to see really because of uh, Epic's insistence. So Epic is actually kind of permeating through this list as well. The fact that we're able to play a game like Fortnite from different hardware manufacturers and we can all meet inside of a world together or Minecraft and there, you know, there is a growing list of these titles is really incredible and it's really a, uh, a movement forward for the business which I think was also exemplified by the fact that Reggie, Sean, and Phil all got up on stage together at Jeff Keighley's uh, Game Awards. That was absolutely a highlight moment because it kind of undercuts and undermines this whole stupid idea that we're in this console war and that if you join one clubhouse, you're cooler for whatever reason than another clubhouse. And I think we're moving away from that slowly but surely. And one of the the key ingredients to uh, making that a thing of the past is going to be this sort of movement towards cloud streaming and getting all of your content that lives on the cloud and through fast connections to the internet, we're going to be able to access beautiful state-of-the-art games, which we're already able to do with Google service. You can check out uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey running at 1080p and 60 frames per second if you've got fast enough connection, which is incredible. Xbox announced their cloud streaming service. Sony's already got their PlayStation Now, and more and more are coming. Netflix put up a Telltale game, the Minecraft Story Mode. Absolutely exciting. Another thing that's very exciting is the fact that in Insomniac really blew up this year with Spider-Man. And Insomniac has been this strong developer, this independent-minded developer for so long. They're in their 24th year. They celebrate 25 years in February. And I've always loved this company. I've always loved what Ted Price and his team have exemplified in the video game community. They've got amazing people working there. It's a company that has built us lots of really indelible content and entertainment in the past, but Spider-Man really has jettisoned them into a whole new stratosphere. And it's a very, very cool thing for them and for the video game industry in general, because I think Spider-Man is such a, uh, a lightning rod that it's attracting people to the medium. And that's Awesome. Very cool stuff there. But our winner this year for the best game news of 2018 has to go to Epic Games, who has had phenomenal success with Fortnite and has converted that success into uh, working with the community in some new and exciting ways, pushing publishers and hardware manufacturers to be a little bit more fair, to give people things like cross-platform play. And now with the uh, Epic Game Store, they're definitely targeting a lot of the success and the monopoly kind of position that Steam has had as a purveyor of PC titles for a long time, but they're extending it out to not just people that are already supporting the um, Epic's Unreal Engine, they're opening up to all kinds of different types of games using whatever engines they want to, and they're being pretty damn fair with the cut that they're taking based on sales. So we're seeing a lot of people take Epic up on this offer, and a lot of new games are being offered on the Epic Game Store, and uh, a big chunk of this, I think, is on the back of the success of Fortnite, which nobody, including Epic, could have called, but this has really been their year. So congratulations to Epic and Epic Games and the Epic Game Store. You are the best game news of 2018. We are moving on to our next category, which is a little bit awkward. This is the worst letdown of 2018. Here are our nominees. The PlayStation Classic Edition from Sony Interactive Entertainment. Fallout 76, developed and published by Bethesda Game Studios. The lack of Xbox exclusives in 2018. The news that PlayStation and other publishers have dropped out of E3 2019. And the abrupt and devastating closure of Telltale Games. Yeah, this is kind of a bummer category. <laughs> it's uh, it's tough to kind of get into th some of this stuff, but uh, the video game industry isn't all roses. There are some uh, debacles and some things that... that uh that kind of hurt the business and hurt us as fans of this business. And we're going to get into some of that. We're going to pick our winner uh, right after we hear from the community. 
My most disappointed game of 2018 is easily Fallout 76. From the world, to the graphics, to the gameplay, everything in this game seems to be broken, and any of the categories you talk about, you can bring up an issue with. And that is just a major disappointment for me, especially since Todd Howard promised this unbelievable uh, vision that he had at E3 about what the game would be, and what we got versus what was promised is definitely the biggest disappointment of the year, and I don't even think any of us will be thinking about Fallout 76 as we go into 2019. For me, the unfortunate award of most disappointing game of 2018 is going to be Fallout 76. I thought this game had a lot of potential when I first saw it at E3. I didn't think that them taking it online was going to be much of an issue, honestly, and I thought that would might be a uh, fun and exciting way for them to reinvigorate the series a little bit. Unfortunately, it didn't really pay off. The game didn't really feel finished. It felt a little empty and it left me wanting a lot more. I knew this was going to be my most disappointing game of the year at E3 when we saw Fallout 76. Even before it came out, even before we found out it was full of bugs and it wasn't much fun and looked like crap. A Fallout game to me is not a multiplayer game with no NPCs. That's not a Fallout game. Don't call this shit Fallout. I hope we can swear in this. The growth of people pulling out of events next year. Like everybody's saying like they're not doing this anymore, they're not gonna be doing this anymore. It's like some of the bigger events of the year, getting to see everybody and talk about what's happening in the future and the fact that some of these companies are just announced that they're not gonna be doing things next year. It's like, I'm not just gonna shut down all your studios and everything just back out. <laughs> Stop making games. Go back to making table card games. Most disappointing game has got to go to Sea of Thieves which is a really huge shame because it's by Rare and I used to like their stuff. But just like the vast sea you're exploring, it's completely barren and the content is incredibly shallow, which is kind of ironic for a game that takes place on the ocean. And yeah, there might be some more content going into 2019, but as of right now, unfortunately, it's my most disappointing game of 2018. Sorry, Rare. Sea of Thieves, I had such high hopes that me and my friends were gonna loot people and sink ships. We did that in the first five minutes. Then we were looking for more things to do. I thought the gameplay was very shallow. The servers weren't working well to begin with. I know they patched it, they've updated it. Maybe I might have to go back and revisit it, but right now I was really let down by the game overall. I'm gonna bend the rules a little bit here. I'm gonna go with the Nintendo online service. Even though it's $20, the online service that you get is pretty limited, especially considering Nintendo had all of the time and chance in the world to copy all of the best stuff from Xbox Live and PlayStation Online. I think the biggest disappointment of 2019 was Telltale Games. The fact that they closed seemingly out of the blue, like we knew they were in trouble, we knew they had restructured, we knew they were honing in their focus, great, but then they seem to be on track, right? We're doing the final season of The Walking Dead, we're gonna finish Clementine's story. To have the rug pulled out from underneath the developers the way it was, right? The fact that they didn't have healthcare anymore, they didn't have salaries in a matter of days, a matter of days, like there was no time for them to plan, there was no time for anything uh, to work out, to talk to your family, to figure anything out, it was just boom, it's over, you're done, you're on your own. That was the biggest disappointment for me. It was seeing the good men and women of that company thrown out on the street after working so hard to build franchises we all love so much. To see Telltale go to such crazy heights then in a couple years crash and burn like this, that was devastating. That was a huge disappointment. Thank you to everyone for uh, weathering that difficult topic. Nobody likes to really focus on bad news too much, uh, but sometimes it's important to have a discussion about this. Let's break down the nominees that we put down. The PlayStation Classic Edition, I don't know what Sony did here with this, but I had warning signs the minute that I saw that didn't have dual analog thumbsticks for the controllers. But the fact that they also threw in PAL versions of some games so that timing was affected like Tekken 3 is just unbelievable. Obviously, there's a lot of anger towards this piece this piece of hardware I was gonna say something else but uh, I think a lot of people have been hacking it and turning the system into something that is closer to what they want which is crazy but I think more than anything it's just a big missed opportunity on Sony's part this really should have been wonderful and it should have been a celebration of PlayStation's past kind of like what Nintendo did with the classic edition for the Super Nintendo and the NES but it is not that Fallout 76 also had uh, a lot of warning bells go off throughout the year that it wasn't a play game at E3 or at Gamescom. A lot of the beta stuff was happening very late, really just before 
the game was launched, and it, it still feels like the game is in beta. And then, all, of course, all of the backlash that happened with the very expensive collector's edition with the wrong bags being sent out and then Bethesda having to do that. So, yeah, a, a very disappointing and underwhelming launch for Fallout 76. A lot of disappointed people out there. Of course, everybody's seen the viral video of somebody trying to return that game and, and uh, having a freakout attack. <laughs> Don't do that, that's totally not cool. But hopefully, as we all know, games are live now and they're constantly updated, so hopefully Bethesda is appeasing a lot of those customers and making Fallout 76 a, a better game, a cooler experience as time goes on. The lack of Xbox exclusives is a big deal in 2018. We expect a lot more out of Xbox. Now the flip on this is that at E3 this year, Microsoft announced a whole bunch of uh, new studios that they've acquired, which is excellent, and there's even uh, newer announcements like Obsidian is coming into the fold. So now we can expect a lot more first-party output that's really going to impress us from Xbox. But still, in 2018, that was absolutely a disappointing thing. PlayStation dropping out of E3 2019 is also incredibly disappointing. I've been to every E3, and PlayStation has been there at every E3. The first PlayStation party before the machine had launched in 1995, where Michael Jackson was at. That was a seminal moment for me in my life and in my career. It really kind of underlined that I was on a great career path to be at a party that Michael Jackson was just hanging out at playing video games. I've always had an incredible time observing what PlayStation is doing at E3. And I, I for one, feel that you know, just like it, it's amazing to see Reggie, Phil, and uh, Sean up on stage at the Game Awards, I think it's important for people to see these big hardware manufacturers come together for an event like E3. I think, though, that the biggest disappointment of 2018, as Greg Miller touched on there, is the closure of Telltale Games. This was a studio that uh, built us something really incredible with the way that they looked at narrative inside of video game entertainment and, and interweaving storylines and episodic content. They were so progressive and so ahead of their time with the way that they brought us into their worlds and you know introduced us to their characters and uh, you know hit us with really powerful emotional beats and then to see it all just sort of blow up and dissolve in such a tragic and explosive way it was just really gross the way that it was just so destructive at the end and our hearts go out to all of the people that were affected by Telltale's closure and uh, you know yes thank you to Skybound for picking up some of the employees and carrying on with The Walking Dead. Hopefully that's a success and Skybound sort of reaches deeper into this narrative video game making. Absolutely, the worst news of 2018. Clearly, there is lots to talk about with the games of 2018, but let's move on now to 2019. We've got nominees for the games that we are most excited for next year. Cyberpunk 2077, developed and published by CD Projekt Red. Death Stranding, developed by Kojima Productions, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Kingdom Hearts 3, developed and published by Square Enix. Ghost of Tsushima, developed by Sucker Punch Productions, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Anthem, developed by BioWare, published by Electronic Arts. Now, I'm going to have my winner in this category and also some other games that we didn't mention as nominees. But first, let's go to the community. A lot of good stuff coming out next year. We thought this year was was heavy. We got a ton of great games coming out next year. One that's always been on my radar is Anthem from Bioware. I'm a little worried because, you know, EA, loot boxes, who knows how they're going to twist this around Anthem. But from what I've played of the game, it, it plays like Iron Man, basically. It's like sci-fi Iron Man. But after the Game Awards, after we saw what Obsidian's working on, The Outer Worlds, which is like Fallout meets Firefly meets Obsidian storytelling, that has vaulted to the top of my 2019 list. Unless Cyberpunk 2077 comes out in 2019, which I don't think it is, The Outer Worlds is definitely now the game I'm most looking forward to next year. Hey Shane. What, Adam? What's that off into the horizon over there? Well, that looks like a game we're really excited to play in 2019. Oh my, that looks like The Outer Worlds. A game being developed by the folks at Obsidian, one of the greatest video game developers in the industry right now. That's right, we're talking folks that worked on the original Fallout, Fallout 2, and one of the greatest 3D Fallout games of all time, Fallout New Vegas. They're taking all the experiences from making those games and producing a new one that sort of looks like Fallout and plays like Fallout, but it has a whole new story and isn't actually exactly Fallout. That's right, it's gonna be a mingling of the 
Western and sci-fi genres. Yep, and basically, we couldn't be more excited to play it, and we think it's going to be a very big title in 2019. It has to be Cyberpunk 2077. I'm one of the lucky few who got to see this year's official game demo in person before anyone else. The world CD Projekt Red has built is detailed down to every hidden corner of the world. The unique weapons and different play styles you can adopt going through the story of the game, I'm sure will blow everyone's mind when it comes out. I want to see what Cyberpunk's all about. I got a feeling we won't see it until 2020. Tap through the hour demo. It's like, all right, how many more hour demos am I going to have to sit through before I get to actually play the game? I'm going to hope that's coming out next year, and I'm going to give that one my uh, can't wait to get my hands on. 2019 game I'm most excited for is Shenmue 3. Um, fingers crossed. That thing has been delayed a number of times. I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't show up till 2020. But I really hope we get it. I am in the mood for some fresh Shenmue, man. It's gonna be good. The game I'm most excited for may be coming out in 2019. That is Miyagakure. It's incredibly ambitious. We're talking about the fourth dimension in terms of puzzles, the graphics, the mind-bending logic. This game is what video games are all about. This game will continue to be on my most anticipated list until it finally comes out. It's one of those when it's done kind of games. The game I'm most most excited to play this year, if it comes out, is Beyond Good and Evil 2. Although I don't want to rush Ubisoft if it's going to take till next year or even 2020. Boy, does it look good. It's got to be dreams. Whether you're in VR or not in VR, you can't not be looking forward to this. This is a full game creation tool designed to be anything you want. A racing game, an RPG, an action, whatever someone wants to make, they can make that. And as a consumer, you can just download it. You don't want to make anything, you don't have to. It's going to be absolutely mind-blowing, and it's going to change the game space completely. I would have to say it's a it's a pretty close tie between uh, Metroid Prime 4, assuming that's actually going to come out in 2019, and Wolfenstein Youngblood. Recently finished playing the New Colossus and New Order, and I'm excited to see how the story progresses now that we're, we've hit the 1980s. Death Stranding. Uh, we just heard through the Walmart leak that we could be playing it in June of 2019. I'm extremely excited. This game looks absolutely amazing and bizarre. What are we going to do in that game? I have no idea. We could be delivering packages or we could be delivering babies in a video game. Who knows? For me, the game I am most excited for in 2019 is Metro Exodus because I am a giant fan of this series and have waited very patiently for the next one to arrive. And I think that the Metro series does exceptionally well in creating atmosphere in the in-game world like no other franchise can. Devil May Cry 5. For one, I love hack and slash games like Ninja Gaiden and Bayonetta, but the other reason is that this is the first game in the series that's developed by Capcom themselves since Devil May Cry 4 in 2008. And while I was okay with Ninja Theory's Devil May Cry back in 2013, it's pretty awesome to go back to the original series with old school Dante, which is one of my favorite video game characters of all time. I cannot wait to see what he's gonna do in 2019. My most anticipated game of 2019 19 easily goes to Resident Evil 2. I remember, you know, sitting on the couch and playing Resident Evil 2 with my friend when it came out. The double disc, the whole experience of actually leaving the mansion and going to a whole city that you could explore. Raccoon City is now looking like a dream come true to me, especially on next gen systems versus the original PlayStation. This is just going to be extremely exciting to play because you're going to be thinking about the past game but you're going to be getting some surprises guaranteed capcom is going to nail this one tough question because i still don't believe a lot of games are coming out in 2019. i'm a man who likes to believe in a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush is last of us coming out next year I'll believe it when I see it. I don't trust Neil Druckmann as far as I could throw him, and he is a very light man. So instead, I'm going to say The Division 2. I loved The Division 1. I know The Division 2 is coming out next spring. Knock on wood, and I couldn't be more excited. The fact that Division 2 is in Washington, D.C. The fact that the developers of The Division took all the lessons they've learned with Division 1 and seem to be putting in Division 2, I can't wait to get that game and get lost in that world. Yeah, I don't know if I trust that The Last of Us 2 is coming out in 2019 either, Greg, but uh, I can't wait for that game. We did hear from a couple of people that wrote in. Paul Adamson said 2019 game that he's most looking forward to is Death Stranding, and Jordan Cunningham is most looking forward to the Resident Evil 2 remake. Those are going to be amazing as well. I mean, this is all subjective, right? Like, all of these games look phenomenal in their present state, which is just dream 
state right now. We haven't got our hands on them. But let's look at our nominees. Cyberpunk 2077, CD Projekt Red has said that it's going to be on this current generation of machines. I'm a little suspicious that we're going to get it next year. I also feel like it's also being designed with the PlayStation 5 and next Xbox in mind. Maybe whatever Nintendo is working on for their, uh, their next machine, the Switch Pro might be able to handle this game as well, which would be crazy. Such a cool looking title right there. Death Stranding. Still don't know what the hell this game's about, but it looks amazing. And clearly Hideo Kojima has got some Hollywood clout. He's working with all kinds of incredible creators and actors and performers out there. I think that's going to be a very cool game for them. And also, I think it will have some really tight game design because that's what we don't normally give Kojima's team a lot of credit for is that, yeah, they go esoteric and big and, and their narrative goes all over the place. But at the core of it, fun games to play. Metal Gear Solid games all have been super cool and super innovative not just in their storytelling, but also in their game design. And I expect that that's what we're going to get out of Death Stranding as well. Kingdom Hearts 3, that's purely coming from my heart and from my playtime on the game. I have been overjoyed to jump into that world. It's been made with so much love and so much horsepower. You know, clearly Square Enix is working with a fantastic game engine and they've built something that looks almost identical to what we see on the big screen in these Disney movies and the worlds that we're going to travel to looks like it's just going to be incredible. I've had so much fun in a huge smile on my face every time I've sat down with that game. Anthem also looks like it's going to be a blast. It feels like we're going to get into some really great carnage moments, but also with that uh, patented Bioware storytelling. I can't wait to get lost into the world of Anthem. It's coming up fairly quickly as well. We've got uh, Anthem and we've got Kingdom Hearts 3 sort of right there on the horizon. And, you know, 2019 is coming up fast. Now, Ghost of Tsushima, we don't know for sure that that's going to come out in 2019. It doesn't have a release date. And most of our nominees here, we kind of tried to pick with the idea that we're going to be playing them in 2019. I suspect that we will be playing Ghost of Tsushima in 2019. It's clear that Sucker Punch has been working very hard on this game. Took my breath away when I uh, watched the demo at E3 this year. Absolutely staggering work. Can't wait for Ghost of Tsushima. So what game is EPN most excited to play in 2019? We're going to give that to Cyberpunk 2077. CD Projekt Red doesn't do things half-assed. I think they're going to come out with something enormous and something uh, just mind-blowing and mature and gritty and violent and spectacular. I cannot wait, like most of you, to play Cyberpunk 2077. That gets the Rocket and Raygun Award for the game that we're most excited for. All right, you guys, it's time for the biggie. It's time to give away the award for the best video game of 2018. And this is a hotly contested category. Excellent games this year. We've had so much fun with the Rocket and Rayguns this year. Thank you to everybody that has uh, contributed videos or written us notes or comments or commented below our material. It's so great to have everybody here. But we have to get into this and uh, talk about the best games of the year and pick one of them. Let's take a look at our nominees for best video game of 2018. Spider-Man, developed by Insomniac Games, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Red Dead Redemption 2, developed by Rockstar San Diego and Rockstar North, published by Rockstar Games. God of War, developed by Sony Santa Monica Studio and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, developed by Bandai Namco Studios and Sora Limited, published by Nintendo. Octopath Traveler, developed by Square Enix and Acquire, published by Square Enix and Nintendo. Oh man, we went back and forth about whether Celeste or Octopath Traveler were going to end up in our nominees there. Ultimately, we went with Octopath Traveler, both incredible games. We've got a winner to pick for you guys, but first, we want to hear from our community. One of the hardest awards to pick this year, and that's a compliment to the games industry because there were so many amazing AAA games this year, but I've got to give it to one, maybe two, maybe three. What am I going to do? Uh, let's say Fist of the North Star, Lost Paradise, that deserves it. Spider-Man, that deserves it. God of War, that deserves it. Monster Boy, that deserves it. But I'm going to give it to Red Dead Redemption 2, a game that was firing on all cylinders and has changed the game industry in a way that has opened the open world concept to an incredible degree. you got to play it. I'm only here to express my love and affection for Arthur Morgan. Some people will have been saying some negative things about Red Dead and it kind of hurts me a little bit because I spent so much time with it and it's a game that I continuously go back to for more. I just need more Arthur, I need more poker, I need more blackjack, I just need more of it. I love these worlds 
that I can just spend so much time in and crave more and this game really does that. Yeah, there are some little things here or there that I wish were better and some of the tasks can be a little tedious and uh, repetitive, but outside of that, it's an amazing adventure that I feel like everyone should saddle up and go on. For game of the year, I'm going with God of War. Now this game really shows that even an older series and an older franchise that we've come to know in one respect can completely change. I mean, think of God of War 3 and then take a look at this God of War. It's so much different. There's not even a jump button, but the big risk that they took here really paid off. The story I know resonated with a ton of other people other than myself. The visuals pushed the PlayStation 4 past what I thought was possible at all. And of course, the game itself is outstanding. It's gotta be God of War for me. God of War, and I say that as somebody who originally really didn't like this series, but this newest one is such a great reinvention of the saga. And what's really kinda cool about it is that it's deep, it's emotional, it has great combat, but what's most important is, I finally feel like I actually am Kratos. I feel like I'm getting to walk around and destroy this big piece of mythology. Deltarune, chapter one. That might be cheating, right? It's just chapter one of a game, whatever. It's my list, what are you gonna do? That game genuinely surprised me when it came out. Not only did I not expect the game to come out at all, but I never expected a sequel or a spinoff from Undertale to come out ever. Leave it to Toby Fox, and lo and behold, we got Delta Rune chapter one, and that game was great. It's toss up, it was hard, God of War, Spider-Man crushed it this year for me, got a lot of gameplay, but Spider-Man PS4 swips into my game of the year because how awesome is it to be Spider-Man? With that sort of just creativity behind what Spider-Man is and getting to just swing around and collect new costumes and be the ultimate Spider-Man badass, it finally happened this year, Spider-Man game of the year. No question, no doubt about it, Celeste. I give it a number one spot because it wraps that insane gameplay around an emotional story whose payoff comes from you as the player climbing both a literal and figurative mountain. No other game this year made me feel as human and alive as Celeste's combination of mechanics, plot, characters, and heart. My pick for game of the year, Red Dead Redemption 2. Check it out. So my best PS4 game of the year, best VR game of the year, and best game of the year are all the same game. As it turns out, it's the persistence. Roguelike, first person, shooter, stealth, action, strategy. There's a lot of layers to this thing. It's so immersive, so scary, so thrilling. It makes you feel like a badass. It really just scratches all those VR itches. It just keeps calling me back and back. So the persistence gets my nod for the best game of the year. Distance, and not just because it released on my birthday, but also it features high speed driving action with nice and tight controls, a beautifully Tron-esque environment, plus the music which helped fuel the immersive excitement and I will play forever. Marvel Spider-Man by Insomniac Games. It is fantastic. It's a joy to play. It, it's visually, it's stunning. And then what's really impressive is the story is very, very good. Red Dead Redemption 2, the open world, the music, the characters, the amount of things you can do, the amount of items you can pick up, the amount of animals you can hunt, the amount of interactions that you can have with the NPCs, the amount of buildings you can go into, all of that stuff equals a game that is just magical. I don't think we'll see anything quite like this for a while, maybe until next generation. Spider-Man PS4. I place a lot of value in a game that can bring together the masses. It's a clear sign that a game is great when everyone is excitedly talking about it. I saw friends who hadn't played a game in years return just to play it. Everyone loves Spidey, and Insomniac had its work cut out for them to make a great superhero game that does him justice, and they succeeded with flying colors. For me, the game of the year in 2018 has to be Red Dead Redemption 2, with its impeccable attention to detail. After over a hundred hours of gameplay, I'm still finding new and exciting ways to enjoy the game and finding new encounters, new animals to hunt, and new side missions to partake in. Oh man, game of the year, this is a tough one. I mean, Assassin's Creed was great, Spidey was great. Red Dead Redemption 2, I know is gonna be a lot of people's game of the year, but for me, it's still God of War. The storytelling, the visuals, the level design. Take this franchise that we thought was one thing and keep the, the, the character of it and reinvent it in this way with this amazing world and this incredible action, it's above and beyond. I mean, Red Dead Redemption 2, you did a great job, but I don't think anything tops God of War this year. I'll give you a small hint of what I think Game of the Year is. 
Yup, Insomniac just did a terrific job. Not just make a game that plays great and looks terrific, I personally think this is like the Iron Man of Marvel video games. This should start a renaissance of companies making games and make you feel like the superheroes you're playing. I just enjoyed this game so much and it reminded me what a terrific lineage Stanley left behind. Marvel Spider-Man. Insomniac has really impressed me big time with that open world web slinging action with superb graphics, great story, terrific voice acting, great music, amazing combat. That game seriously can't be missed. My game of the year is God of War. I think it might be my favorite video game of all time. Like it's just, it was a ride like no other. It is a masterpiece in every sense of the word. When I think of story, when I think of acting, when I think of combat, when I think of exploration, nothing in that game felt like a chore. There was and nothing in that uh, nothing in that game didn't demand my full attention because it was so good. Every piece of that game, that world is so engaging and so awesome that I couldn't look away. I never opened Twitter. I never looked at Instagram while I played, right? I was there for that entire journey from the time I, I hit start and Kratos touches the tree to the very, very end when I platinumed it. You know, no big deal. I'm just saying I got the plan. <laughs> God of War is just incredible. Yo, Assassin's Creed is pretty good too. Assassin's Creed is great. Beat Saber is amazing as well. There was no shortage of games this year. All right, so our community is pretty evenly divided out there between Spider-Man, God of War, and Red Dead Redemption 2, all phenomenal games. I did do a, a, a reach out to some members of uh, the game development world as well. I wanted to hear from some game developers, so I tweeted to uh, some people that I know out there. Not everybody was ready to jump into this. A lot of people were like, I can't pick one, I can't, but that was cool. I'm looking at you, Amy Hennig. Uh, but uh, Brian Intahar, the creative director of Insomnia, said God of War, most definitely God of War. Raphael Von Lira, the game director at Hinterland Games, said Frostpunk. Justin Richmond, he's the co-founder, executive producer of Wonderstorm. He said God of War and Fortnite are a tie. Corey Barlog, the director of God of War, said Spider-Man. So we saw the uh, creative director at, uh, on Spider-Man say God of War and the director on God of War say Spider-Man. So I see what you guys did there. Michael Gamble, lead producer at Bioware, he's working on Anthem right now, said God of War. And Tim Schaefer, founder of Double Fine, said Minute is his game of the year. Jordan Cunningham, who is uh, an EPN member and a great supporter of ours. Thank you, sir. He says uh, his Rocket and Reagan uh, game of the year is Spider-Man. Okay, let's look into these nominees here for a second. I'm going to talk about Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, absolutely stunning game. Obviously, the art was the first thing that gives you a big punch in the face. It's like, holy crap, look at how beautiful this game is. Particularly if you're playing it on the more powerful uh, consoles, the Pro or the Xbox One X. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous escape. You feel like you you can uh, almost reach out and touch the frayed edge of your leather hat. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just feels like the detail and refinement in this game is from another planet. It's so damn good. And then you do get into this uh, sort of loss of time when you're playing Red Dead Redemption 2. You slow right down. That became both a way to enjoy the game and also to kind of get frustrated with the game as well because I found myself you know, feeling like, wow, my life is going by as I'm playing this game at the turn of the 20th century there. Still stunning and an incredible technical accomplishment and absolutely deserving of a nomination here in this category. I would say that also about God of War published uh, by Sony. Really, really surprisingly crafted by the team at Sony Santa Monica. I remember the reveal of this game with Corey up on stage and it just looked so grounded and so much from the ilk of the last Last of Us and what Naughty Dog had been doing with uh, Uncharted and, and Last of Us. I wasn't expecting any of that. I wasn't expecting to almost tear up and as a father playing a game where I have a, a child that, it, you know, is kind of can take care of themselves, but you also have to watch out for them. It, it really got me. It really got me. There's a family dynamic and an a, a emotional truth to the way God of War was made and, and written for us that is palpable and is inescapable and so much a, uh, a gift to celebrate in our business. Really wonderful work with God of War. And I have to tell you, intellectually, 
I would probably choose God of War as the, the winner in this category, but I leaned in a different direction. Octopath Traveler was one that really got into my heart as well. It really sort of zeroed in on my, my nostalgic kind of memories of playing Super Nintendo role-playing experiences, and it just made me feel great about life, <laughs> you know? And sometimes games can be as simple as that. You know, they could just make you feel glad to be alive. And when I was playing Octopath Traveler and I just saw this beautiful pop-up art and animation and I was just blown away. Beautiful, beautiful game. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate also qualifies. It is a, a relentless and overwhelming cavalcade of experience and joy. You're going to have a blast playing that with your friends. You're going to have a blast playing that online, even if they still have to work out some of the kinks there. It is just a, a, a bounty of good times with Super Smash Brothers Ultimate and it's uh, it won for our best Nintendo Switch game of the year, and for good reason. But the winner this year, for me, and I think you could see the writing on the wall because I haven't been able to stop talking about it, is Marvel's Spider-Man. And it's funny because I gave the game a 9.5, and I, I really kind of harped on the fact that it felt like I'd been here before because there's been exceptional Spider-Man games in the past. And certainly, it doesn't try to reinvent all of that. It sort of just refines it. And then the emotional core, the resonance of the Peter Parker mythology, the story of Spider-Man is so beautifully represented here. It expects that the audience knows a little bit. It doesn't dumb it down. It doesn't manufacture it in a way that's sort of a wink that like you've seen all this before, but here it is again. It's like, no, it picks up midstream. We pick, we start in Peter Parker's apartment and his junk is scattered all over the place and there are little cool details everywhere. And his interpersonal relationships with all of the characters that we have within the game are so well well-crafted and written and performed and you're laughing and you're tearing up and you're getting frustrated by the, the sort of having to redo combat sequences again or challenges again but you keep playing and you keep unlocking those suits and then you download the DLC and then you start your new game plus and then you realize wait a minute this is the Rocket and Raygun award winner for best video game of 2018. Congratulations to Insomniac and Marvel and Sony. Incredible job done right there. That's going to do it for our Rocket and Raygun Awards. Thank you all for watching. And a big, big extra thanks to everybody that took some time out to send us a video. Mwah! Love you guys. You guys are incredible. EPN members, thank you so much. You outdid yourselves this year. Can't wait to put more EPN member videos into our content in 2019. So please come back for that. And uh, we will see you all very soon. Have an awesome holiday season. And remember, play forever. <laughs>